Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Needless to say, I keep her in check. She was all bad, but nevertheless, calling it quits now, baby. I'm wreck, crashing my place, baby. I'm wreck. Needless to say, I'm keeping her in check. She was all bad, but nevertheless, calling it quits now, baby. I'm a wreck. Crashing my place, baby, you're a wreck Thinking in a bad way, losing your grip Screaming at my face, baby, don't trip Someone took a big, I don't know what I feel Looking at your sideways, party on till Hello and welcome to another web-slinging edition of Neil Before Pod I'm your host Craig and I'm taking a leap of faith into another multiverse to host a discussion about the recently released Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse First up, word has it that he burns a match down to his fingertips just to feel Andrew. Welcome. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, need to clear your throat there. <laughs> I'm just uh, speaking as darkly and dramatically as possible to as, to as, to to uh, to externalise the internal pain and anguish and ag- agony that yes that fuels my every waking moment. Cool. <laughs> that's that's a dark start to the podcast. Uh, Next up, uh, I believe she can float through the air when she smells a delicious pie. It's Cat. Uh, hello, and also that's true. Well, uh, I wouldn't have said it otherwise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and last but by no means least, word has it that he's releasing a Christmas album in March. It's Isaac. Hello. Hello. How's your Christmas album coming? Uh, yeah, let's talk about it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the, I bought the CDs, so now I've got to just make the stuff and burn it on them. He's got, got a big tower of rewritable CDs. Got a big tower of DVD art. Oh no, I bought DVD art! <laughs> it's a disaster. Yeah, it was one ninety nine for a thousand of them. It was one ninety nine for a thousand of them. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you all liked your Spider-Verse themed intros. I actually remembered some of the dialogue from the film, so go me. Yep. I'd forgotten the bit about the match, and I thought you'd just been really mean. <laughs> oh, right. No. No. Um, I was being mean, but also... Yeah, yeah also that's what... Well, well, and it also fun. means that, that, I, that I can now pretend to be Nicolas Cage. You can, yeah. Um, much like Nicolas Cage does. <laughs> he doesn't know who he is anymore. But before we begin talking about our main topic, uh, we'll go on to our Kneel Before and Rise Against section. Andrew, you can go first. Okay, well, I am kneeling before the second season of of a, a series called uh, Thunderbolt Fantasy, um, and uh, th- uh, this is well, well, it's it's kind of, it's kind of like an an, an anime, a Japanese anime series. Um, I think it's because it's in in it's uh, in. in it uh, involves uh, uh, what's the right? elaborate, elaborate sword fighting and yes, and and magic and histrion- histrionic effects um, yes, and ex- and exaggerated characters yes, who 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 talk entirely in vast monologues even when fighting, except it's all done with puppets. Oh, and it is demented and it is magnificent. The first season of it uh, was was uh, about. About like uh, a, ran- a random bunch of bunch of warriors who banded together t- um, to to assault like the, the, the castle of um, of of, the, of, the, of his demon lord, um, and now with the and the the second one uh, f- f- uh, follows on from that and f- following one of, one of the central characters from the from the first season, um, um, in 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 his quest to to get rid of a vast collection of obscenely magical swords. Um, that, that, that he has gathered together to keep them out, out of the hands of evil. Yeah, yeah, yes, but of course he he ends up losing a couple of them, and chaos and havoc ensues. Yeah, yeah, in like, you know, it's, it's a little hard to describe it in in in, in more than in in more than broad terms. Um, but yeah, but it's but it it's definitely something that. That I that I would rec- I would recommend uh, uh, pe- 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 people people check into um I, I, um and in, in in particular if if they're if they're a fan of, of anime because because it does it does have uh, much much the same 
uh, kind of story structure and and uh, humor and, and action, again, just with puppets. Cool. I've never heard that of it. That sounds very interesting. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of it, and it sounds really cool. I'll definitely check it out. How can yeah. people watch it? Um, or can you not say for legal reasons? Oh, no, no, actually, um, it is. Um, it's, it streams on on um, on a site called Crunchyroll, uh, hmm. like, who, um, who like who 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 show who show a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of anime, which is probably that's like anime Netflix, there. isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. It's, yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, if that sounds interesting, get your free trial of Crunchyroll and get it binged. I guess. Um, I'm assuming they do a free trial. I don't know. They're not a sponsor, so <laughs> <laughs> if only. Um, Isaac, I know you've got something. What, what uh, are you kneeling before? Uh, I've actually just last minute changed my kneel before. Oh, because changing. the first one was very interesting. But the new one is, I'm just happy that we're, there's lots of space stuff going on. <laughs> so I forgot about it, because there was that thing where they landed a... Like, China landed a something on the dark side of the moon, and there was these pictures of... Uh, like this lake, like this sort of ice thingamajig on Mars, like this big sort of what do you call crater, and it's like a frozen crater thing. And then we're getting like all these cool pictures, and then there was that other rover that's going to Mars. So I think I was going to do before that space is getting interesting again. Real <laughs> space, not not this real space, space, real actual space, and maybe it's all building up to another sending some people. Well, it would be well away yet, won't it? But should start sending people out and explore the universe a bit more. I mean, there's the, like, not that much of the universe because they're still, like, pretty much just looking out the porch, just yeah. the next door. It's but like still, really it's entertaining slow Star and Trek. Fun. Yeah, like a really slow Star Trek. Yeah. We get to Mars, and that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. It's still pretty good, though. Yeah, some when, did, when did you get to Mars? Um, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Still more than what you've got to. <laughs> Some of these pictures are spectacular. I've seen, yeah, yeah, I've seen quite a lot of them, and I always love it when you just get an, an image from another planet. When you just think about everything that had to happen to make that happen, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, the the wallpaper on on my computer is is actually an an image of of, of twilight uh, on the surface of Mars. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 So just looking at it, you're just kind of thinking that is another planet. Yeah, and it's just. It's just, just seeing that kind of thing. It's just, it's just like impossible to not feel oh the concept. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Yeah, it's good that we're doing something positive as a species. Occasionally. <laughs> cool. So kneeling before just space in general. Kneeling before going into it. Yeah. Looking at space again. Well, uh, because we haven't talked about this previously, I'm going to kneel before. There was a recent trailer, a third trailer for Captain Marvel that was essentially not much more than the other two trailers. But um, And I think the trailers aren't immense, aren't all that great as such, but I think it, it still looks really cool and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in about two months. It's just less than two months until it comes out. Looking forward to Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah well, I think, I think in, in terms of... In terms of the of the objective quality of the trailers, it doesn't it doesn't re- doesn't really matter that much, like how how much or or, or how, how little they actually show, just because everybody's going to be completely completely psyched for for it, for it regardless. Um, yeah, and and and, pr- and pretty much any any kind of any kind of small any kind of smaller detail is is just going to look absolutely awesome, just pure, purely on, on on account of the film itself. D. H. Samuel L. Jackson for an entire film. <laughs> that, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 and 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 also uh, uh, D. Uh, D. H. Clark Gregg as well because Coulson's in it. Yeah, we'll have hair and everything. It'll be really surreal. Um, good to see Coulson again, back back on the big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, because last time we actually saw him was when Loki stabbed him. Yeah. Which... I mean, <laughs> I guess on the big screen. On the big screen, yeah. On the, on the small <laughs> screen, I've seen a hundred plus hours of, of <laughs> lots of lots of lots of them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps too much. Some might say no. Yeah, I always like Goldman. <laughs> um, but yeah, on the big screen, there'll be so many people in the audience that wouldn't have watched any of Agents of Shield 
Uh, so they'll be like, oh, this guy, I remember this guy from like eight years ago, or six years ago, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. So Captain Marvel, that's me. I'm excited. But any Marvel movie mm. is gonna gonna make me excited, pretty much. No matter what it is, even Ant Man and the Wasp. That was a really Man. bad one. <laughs> it wasn't really bad. Was it wasn't terrible. the worst one, but it was a bad one. <laughs> it was bad. It was. I, I yeah. I hadn't felt such crushing disappointment in a long time. I've mentioned this on another podcast episode, so I won't. I won't go deeply into it. But my God. <laughs> Oh, I don't it, mind it. Oh, it, it was it was better than, better than the dark dark world. Yeah, yeah, it was. No, <laughs> no, it was worse. <laughs> okay, so that's it, Captain Marvel. Uh, Kat, do you have anything? Um, I have something related to this episode. Um, so I was reading the list of Golden Globe winners. And I am so happy that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won a Golden Globe. <laughs> yeah. Because um, you know, usually you get you get all the all the Netflix, uh, sorry, not Netflix, Disney films, uh, winning all the animation categories. But it's great that that doesn't didn't happen this time. I mean, not that this film isn't great, but it's not a big year of competition animation-wise. I don't think you know. I've, I can't think of any animation I've seen this year that I really was impressed with. Um, yeah, well, uh, uh, when, when was Coco released? Cause uh, oh, that was this year, wasn't it? Yeah, last it was, year. Well, that was, was last year. Yeah, but my head's still mm. in twenty eighteen. It's already won an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that was last year. So yeah, um, so yeah, it was the same year, but. Um, or was it 2017 in the US? Who knows? I don't know. But never mind. I don't think this is a, a huge year for animation, the, the 2018 year. Um, Wreck-It Ralph was decent. No, it wasn't amazing, but it was decent. So yeah, awards for Spider-Verse. Maybe it'll get an Oscar. Who knows? Hmm. Yeah. So let's uh, move on to Rise Against. Uh, Andrew, you went first last time. Go first this time. Well, the thing I think I'm I'm rising against is it's it's on with it's on with a, with a little a little a little reservation because it's because I'm being being a bit specific, specific about it. Um, sorry, I'm just being a bit vague. Okay, so so I'm I'm um, I'm rising against uh, the uh, recently released trailer for the new Hellboy movie. Um, and yeah, the, 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 I. Yeah, but the reason for that is I, in, in, in the, I, I, I actually actually quite enjoyed the trailer, and yes, and I think that it looks like it, it's going to be a good film. Though, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the thing I didn't like about it w- uh, just was was the, the the way the way that the way that it was cut and edited, because, uh, um, it, it, it just uh, because it, it, was, it, was fo- it was focusing a lot on um, on the on the on, on the on the comedic. On the comedic aspects of the story, um, yeah. Although, 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 and I am, I am, I am a, a big, a big fan of the, of, like, of the Hellboy comics, and yeah, and yes, uh, and and having comedic moments in, in, in them is an, is an essential part of what they are. Though, yeah, though, I, though, I felt that that the the way that the trailer was put together, it it seemed to be uh, trying to create the impression that the entirety of the film was going to be like that. And I really, really don't think it will be. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 but, it's, yeah but, it's, it, but it seems to me to, to be, to be uh, deliber- deliberately cre- uh, cre- creating a false impression. Yeah, I wasn't impressed by the trailer either. Um, I'm fairly sure that's not going to be the, you know, how the, the end result will turn out as you said but I don't know um, I don't know what I was expecting was it maybe expecting to see why it's being R rated I don't know they could maybe do a bit more horror I have no idea or maybe it just will be obscenely violent but it just kind of looks I mean it looks like a, a naff copy of the you know the other one the other Hellboy franchise Um, it's not yeah it's not that great David Harbour looks great though it's oh yeah, Harper, isn't it? He, he it looks is, great yeah. as Hellboy. Um, 
seen season one of Stranger Things and I was like, oh yeah, he looks like a Hellboy. Definitely looks like a Hellboy. But uh, yeah, I love the Del Toro movie. Um, and it's a shame that that third one will never be made. Uh, I haven't seen a know? single Hellboy film. <laughs> you haven't? Oh. No. <laughs> Um, and I have to say, I have I, I have little interest, despite being a really big Del Toro fan. Um, I don't know, something about the aesthetic of it and not really... Yeah, like, I don't know, I know it never captured me, and so I never watched them. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, um, I think the first one is that kind of classic, we'll do what the studio says to get this made. And then the second one... Is that you've made Pan's Labyrinth? You do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah, because like the 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 second one like was like was was so much more like a, a clearly a, a Del, Del Toro movie. Yeah. Just with, with all, all these like phantasmagorical creations and just uh, so, uh, so, so so many monsters of this of this like terrifying beauty. Yeah. yeah. And. And also, uh, also a hell of a hell of a, of, of a lot of of uh, 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 living clockwork. Yeah, and the the first one had a pointless human character that didn't need to be there, uh, who's dismissed with a throwaway line in the second film. It was just like you got him sent to Antarctica. That's it, job done. No no explanation. No one cares. No one cares if he's there or not. So yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because because uh, that, that that actually was one of my issues, like with with the first movie, because like, well, it was because um, that character, I can't remember his name. Um, yeah, 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 but, Myers, I think. Uh, sounds right. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but his his like purpose like, was 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 to be an, an audience surrogate, yeah. and yeah, and I uh, got the impression that that was something that was fostered on Del Toro by by the studio, rather rather than a choice that he would have made himself. Yeah, for sure. So you're up next, Isaac. What did you want to rise against? I'm going to rise against all the live-action Star Wars TV stuff sounding terrible and looking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Just all of it. Well, I don't know. The two that I know of is The Mandalorian, which could have sounded interesting. They said, they go, oh, Harry Lowley looks like Boba Fett, but who's behind the mask? And it's like, it's that guy from Game of Thrones who looks like the guy who played Boba Fett. But who's his friend's going to be? Well, there's IG88, and there's probably going to be Bosk. So it's just, but it's just Boba Fett. It's just a Boba Fett thing. And they call it the Mandalorian, but it's just a character we already know. It's nothing new. And, it, and maybe it'll be in some interesting situation. But what's the point? What's the point of making a new TV show or like a, a like set in like a new area where you just seems a character who already exists, and like making the barest minimum change? And the other ones that rubbish person, because like I hate Rogue One. More than anything, like I'll watch a holiday film like ten times in a row before I watch Rogue One. And the other one's that wow. it's just that guy. What's he called? Cassian. Yeah, that guy. And he was terrible. He was such a rubbish. Like I don't want to see anything related to those characters or that film. And it's just like more they announce. I'm like, can I just make something good? <laughs> like another in the Clone Wars, and I've never seen the Clone Wars, except for those Mon Calamari ones, which were quite fun. <laughs> but like. I don't know all of it just sounds like, like just the worst stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that enthusiastic about the the stuff they've announced for the Star Wars TV stuff either. Um, maybe it'll be good though. Maybe it depends what they do with it. But you know, it's a huge universe, and this is what you're coming back to. Yeah, they just haven't. Yeah. They're not really taking advantage of it. I don't think. I suppose no. it, maybe it's like a safe start. Maybe it's going like, we'll start off safe and do some characters people know, and then we'll do some crazy stuff later. But, I don't know. I definitely won't be tuning in for, like, immediately. I'll have to wait a bit and see what, what else they come up with. <laughs> see what other people think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fair rise against. It's, it's fairly underwhelming. I'm kind of underwhelmed by everything they're announcing for Star Wars at the moment, though. Which isn't that much, mm. to be honest. Um, after Solo didn't do as well as they hoped it would, they've not really got any plans anymore. We'll make episode nine, then we'll see what happens. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the current stand. But uh, yeah, there's a new cartoon that I've not watched yet. Uh, oh, well, yeah. Resistance. Resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, oh, I have watched it, but it, it's really it's. It's it's not it's not been grabbing me like, like in in the same way that the Clone Wars or Rebels did. Is it because I, there's no lightsabers? 
Yes, I, I am. I am that shallow. <laughs> That was a critique I saw of it. Someone said, what, uh, there's no lightsabers, and I like lightsabers, so this isn't Star Wars. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Fair one. Um, Kat, do you have an opinion on these uh, Star Wars TV shows that are coming out? Uh, I, I'll reserve judgment, I guess. I, I'm with Isaac in that I didn't like Rogue One very much, um, and Solo was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've enjoyed The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, so you know at least in the main narrative, I'm I'm quite on board with it. Uh, but I feel like Disney is definitely like very ambitious in its announcements. We're going to do a live action Marvel thing with Tom Hiddleston as Loki, and it's going to be a prequel. And here's all this Star Wars stuff with the Rogue One people, and I'm just like. The guys slow down like make sure that at least the movies do well and like make good stuff before you start announcing things like it is a little bit reaching for our cash <laughs> very aggressively um and and as much as i love this franchise i love all of these franchises and i do love disney money hungry as they are i do love them but it is very obvious at this point, so I'm, like, a little hesitant. But that being said, it might even be good. Who knows? So I'm going to reserve judgment for the time being. Well, John Favreau's producing The Mandalorian, so that's, you know, it's got some... I, I don't know that that is necessarily... I don't know that that is a seal of of quality. I didn't like the Iron Man movies, um, Jungle Book. Jungle Book was <laughs> unnecessary, as is Lion King. So, like, truly, John Favreau, like, I, I don't know that he has given us anything that I feel particularly, you know, like, has added to the canon of pop culture. Like, he rehashes things, and the first two Iron Man movies were terrible, in my opinion. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I like his his output uh, for the most part uh, from what I've seen mm. of it anyway uh, I'm sure there's some comedies that I would hate that he's directed or been in or you know that he was good in those episodes of Friends he was in uh, way back. that doesn't mean anything in this case <laughs> my god 20 years ago <laughs> yeah, and you know he'll find a way into the Mandalorian because that's what he does he, he just puts himself in his own stuff that's that sounds like fun. a dodgy me too Thing. Like. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and uh, also, uh, isn't Taika uh, uh, Ta- 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 Waititi involved in it as well? Or am yeah, I making I think, that up? Uh, yeah, I think he's directing an episode, isn't he? Something like that. Mm. Maybe I'm making that up. Is Werner Herzog's involved? I can't remember why or how. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, one of them's got. I think he's in, like, he's acting in one of them. Okay. I'll, just, I'll just do a quick. I'll, I'll just quickly back up my crazy claim. Bear with me. <laughs> no, yeah, he's going to be in it apparently. Uh, Taika Waititi is directing an episode, as is Bryce Dallas Howard, because she's a famous director. Yeah, got to start somewhere. I don't even know if that's her first directing, but anyway, that's beside the point. So yeah, Star Wars TV. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cat, do you have a rise against? Other than just ragging on. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I have I have <laughs> rise against John Favreau. Um, I want to controversially rise against um, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> no blasphemy. No Lin Manuel Miranda's accent in Mary Poppins Returns. Um, I yeah I don't know. I feel like everybody loves this guy, and I do too. You know I loved Hamilton. I love his writing output is fantastic, but just must we with the terrible Cockney accent yeah, that yeah. nobody talks like that except Dick Van Dyke in a movie like a million years ago, which we have all, I feel, in the decades since accepted that that was a terrible accent. And instead of, I don't know, fixing it, they made it worse with Lynn manuel Miranda's, like, terrible impersonation of Dick Van Dyke, so but I'm going to rise against that, because what the hell, man? <laughs> well, we, we all know that Mary Poppins was... Mary Poppins Returns was just 
we're just going to make the first one again. Um, yeah. Pretty much. So I didn't like Mary Poppins Returns pretty much at all. Um, I don't remember the first film that well, but then as I was watching it, I was like, oh yeah, that's like that bit in the first one. Because like, I guess cultural osmosis has you know made me aware of the 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 highs of that film effectively. So yeah, it, it was very Force Awakens to me. So I've already seen this sort of, mm. you know. Um, so yeah, I, I suspect that accent was deliberate, which probably makes it worse. Oh, it absolutely was deliberate <laughs> and awful. <laughs> Hence my rising against it. Fair one. I uh, managed mm. to get a slagging of Mary Poppins in somewhere, so I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> Result. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've never... I don't really know what Hamilton is, other than it's a musical that people like. I know that everybody talks it's about it. It's a musical. But... It's a... Yeah, it's fantastic. It's it's really a marvel in writing. Um, and it's it's won numerous award awards for the writing itself. Because um, it's inspired by hip-hop and rap music and essentially it's telling the story of alexander hamilton who was one of the founding fathers of the usa um but using unexpected kind of musical mediums and lin-manuel miranda is very good at uh sort of rap and hip-hop writing like his rhyme schemes are fantastic like it's just a, a marvel to listen to it's just a lot of fun um and I enjoyed the music a lot more than the actual stage version, which is also a little bit controversial, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> oh, is that a film as well? No, it's a musical on stage. Oh, right. Because ah, you said... The, the music- stage oh, version, not the film version. Ah, oh, right, okay. The musical... Oh, yeah, sorry, I meant the the album. Oh, I see. Is what I meant. The, the music itself, so like just the audio version rather than the um, staging, but right. yeah. Well, I mean, it's never toured, so I would never have a chance to see it. So, yeah. At least not. Well, someday. Maybe. Yeah, if it ever comes to Edinburgh, I'll think about it. Um, <laughs> fair enough. So, we'll move on to my Rise Against, which is very recent news. It looks like they're just not going to make this 14th Star Trek film. I'm not calling it the fourth one, because it's the 14th Star Trek film. Uh, Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pine both walked away a few months ago, because... It seems like Paramount were trying to cheap out on them uh, by mm. not paying them and what they what they get paid to do other stuff. So they were like, yeah, see you later. We're not that attached. Bye. Um, and now the director's buggering off to do the Game of Thrones prequel. Mm. So it looks like Paramount are just not going to do this uh, just because they're cheap. So, um, Or I suspect that they're cheap. It wouldn't be the first time they tried to shortchange people um, for, you know, just to get a film made. But yeah, it's a shame because Star Trek Beyond restored my faith in the J.J. Uh, Abrams created universe after Into Darkness mm. destroyed my faith in the J.J. Abrams created universe. Um, so Yes, and you were far from the only one. Yeah, and after Beyond I was ready to see more, I wanted to see more, I was hyped, I was like, yeah, this is the direction I could, I could get behind, I could enjoy this. And now it's like, yeah, we just won't make this. But the good news is there'll be more Star Trek TV than I can even watch in the near future. Hmm. So, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. Yeah, uh, it'd be a shame. I would like to see the uh, Chris Pine and uh, Carl Urban, etc., one more time, at least one more time, in those roles. Just bring Shatner back and claim that he's been infected by an aging virus, and then <laughs> just get on with it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> there, there have been stupider things. Spock brain. Spock brain. <laughs> Why not? Do that too. Yeah. Screw it. Well, I quite like in Starkness, so my opinion is vetoed and burned into the ground. I've seen people <laughs> I'm not allowed. Yeah, you're in the wrong group for that one. <laughs> cool. Um, shall we move on? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're actually here to talk about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yet another Spider-Man film, some might say. Not me. But, uh, I'd watch a Spider-Man film every week if they'd let me. But, uh, a new one, not just the ones that have already been out, because that would get boring. Uh, so, first of all, I thought I'd just go around the room, the virtual room, and see what people, how people are attached to Spider-Man as a character, because I think this film is very much about 
how people might feel about Spider-Man as a character as much as it is a, a story that we'll talk about. So, uh, Andrew, what's your attachment to to Spider-Man, if any? Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, uh, uh, like I imagine, uh, is is the same for a lot of people. Uh, Spider-Man w- was actually my my fir- uh, my first uh, in- introduction in- into the, the the world of superhero comics. Um, yep, yeah, because yeah, I. I, I, I remember. I, I remember uh, one, uh, one, one, one Christmas. Uh, my, um, my, my parents are just uh, getting me like a few, a few random issues of it uh, from Forbidden Planet. And when I, I read, I read them that they were just, they were just absolutely brilliant fun because, because, uh, because, because, as, as, as I found like uh, there was there was a lot, a lot more depth of character, um. Than than um, than than I was I was used to in um, in in most things which are aimed aimed at children and 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 also and also uh, particularly young children as well and it was quite a nice change like to to actually read something um I like like the, 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 the didn't seem so throwaway and disposable and then after that there was there was also the uh, the car- the cartoon series which I. Uh, which which I I which I I remember absolutely loving, though I would be hard pressed to 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 actually to actually relate anything that happens in it because I honestly can't remember. <laughs> yeah, um, the cartoon was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it might be it might be something that to to uh, I might get around to rewatching one day, um, once I actually get around to watching the several thousand. Other things I haven't watched yet that I, that I want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just as a follow on, Spider Verse, did you enjoy it? I did. It was magnificent. And yes, and and is is and is is now uh, my uh, my favorite my favorite of of the Spider Man movies so far released. Interesting. A lot of people are saying that. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I love Spider-Man, always have. I can't remember a time where I didn't love Spider-Man. I read comics when I was younger, watched the cartoons, had the toys, everything. I couldn't get enough of Spider-Man when I was younger. And I remember, I still remember the way I felt the first Bramie film came out. It was just, that was incredible, you know, and uh, it was such an experience to have it, you know, have Spider-Man in live action. And then Spider-Man 2 came out and it was even better. And then... Spider-Man three came out, and I'm still defending it to this day, uh, and uh, and so on and so on. And yeah, whatever whatever Spider-Man happens to be in, I'll give it give it a look. Uh, the cartoons have been good. Ultimate Spider-Man is iffy, but you know, yeah, he's just my favorite fictional character um, because he's just so relatable. He's all of us. Uh, all he has normal problems that you can relate to. You know, he's. Yeah, he just has trouble with stuff, which is which is great, and, um, and his powers are cool. The costume's iconic. I could go on, but I won't. I mean, I just love Spider Man. Uh, Cap, what's your connection to the character? I don't know that I have a particularly emotional connection to Spider Man. Um, I never really read the comics um, or saw the animated series. I know you love it a lot, so um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't really seen it. Um, I quite enjoyed the first couple of Tobey Maguire movies. Um, I think they were probably my gateway into superhero movies. Um, And then I enjoyed Amazing Spider-Man 1 and then most of number (laughs) 2, as I think most of us did. Um... I, I think that Peter Parker is fascinating as a character, um, and I quite what like was quite interested in the idea of like there being someone other than Peter Parker. Um, there was a lot of conversation back in the day when uh, Homecoming was about to start filming. Basically, whenever Spider Man came back to Marvel uh, for movie rights. And there was a lot of conversations about maybe having Miles Morales be the the MCU Spider-Man. And that's when I became aware of, like, all these different Spider-Men. 
And I was like, oh, my God, yes, bring it. That would be so cool. Do we need another Peter Parker? Um, that being said, Tom Holland did a really good job, and I really liked Homecoming um, and and his role in Infinity War and all of that. Just like I, I like him, and I see why they went with Peter Parker again. Um, but, yeah, to, I, I suppose, yeah, like, like Andrew, this is probably my favorite Spider-Man movie. Cool. Isaac, what's your connection to Spider-Man? Uh, I don't really like, like, the character of Spider-Man, but I think he's got the same problem as Batman, where it's like, he has the best villains, so you have to kind of read his stuff, because it's the most interesting. But, like, yeah, he's like, he's Marvel's version of Batman, but you don't, I don't really like... Or not like, but I've like I think because I've only really started knowing about Spider-Man since moving in with you, and I think I missed the point where you're supposed to read it, where you're supposed to like sort of grow up with him as like a teenage sort of thing. So now I just sort of find him a bit annoying, and he's like, he's, like all the other characters are like more interesting, and he's just a bit sort of smarmy, and I don't really like him. Boy, well, he's got the best villain, and uh, so yeah, like. I like some of the films. I liked Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I do not like that film. I like that one. I thought it was quite fun. I like the <laughs> dubstep battles and Times Square. But, like, the films are okay. They're, they're, they're good. Like, they're good. Like, watching back, like, Spider-Man 2 is good. The other ones are, like, sort of fine. Homecoming was quite good. It's nice to sort of see a super criminal as opposed to, like, some... Like, it was just, a, was he, who plays him again? Who plays Falcon? Michael Keaton. And it's That's Falcon. it, yeah, and he's just, he's just found some tech and he's going to do some robberies, which is quite sort of, not wholesome, but like, it's diff- It's nicely different from what you usually get in Marvel movies, where it's like, it's the, whichever superhero's mate with the suit is a villain. <laughs> and this time it's just like, it's just a guy who's making the most of this crazy universe he lives in. So I mean, that was quite fun. And um, yeah, Spider-Verse is definitely the best Spider-Man movie. Just because it's like the most... Just because it's like, it just look, it looks the best and it sounds the best. and It's just the most interesting, I think. Cool. Uh, and Kat, I neglected to ask you what you thought of Spider-Verse, so uh, without spoiling, of course. Um, I mean, as I say, it was my favorite um, of the lot. Um, I think that they did the best job at combining, like, the comic book aesthetic with cinema. This is what comic book movies should be. Um, and obviously, you know, like, I don't, I don't know that we'll see another, like, ambitious feat like this attempted anytime soon but the idea of like bringing in all of these separate um iterations of the same character all these different storylines bringing them together making us aware of the of of all of them separately uh seeing them interact like that sort of thing like is brilliant i I thought it was brilliant um and it was really well done it was very emotional i you know really connected with it um, you know, I loved the animation style. I thought it was really unique and w- combined with like a very modern, like contemporary hip hop, like soundtrack. It was, it was just like what the kids these days are into. You know what I mean? <laughs> and kids get off my and then, then kids. And that's <laughs> great. You know, like maybe it's not the kind of music that I listen to, but it's the music that Miles Morales would listen to. And that's the point, you know, like, because this movie isn't necessarily for people like me. It's for, it's for, like, the youth of today. Um, And I love that. And I feel like, you know, it makes us all kind of, like, connect with that, like, aspect of Spider-Man of, like, you know, he's just a kid and he's learning how to, you know, be a superhero and be himself in a world that wants him to be a bunch of other things and yeah i loved it it was so good <laughs> yeah i loved it as well uh, i always like when sort of genre movies that are adaptations of something are made by people that that love the material that they're adapting um 
I mean, sometimes it goes too far the other way and you just get thrown at references that no one will get except people that know these things. And, you know, those references do exist, but they don't get in the way of the story. You know, it's not that you need to know how his web shooters work to understand how he defeats the villain at the end or something. You know, it's um, stuff like that. But um, I thought it was a great story. It was really well told. Uh, for me as a Spider-Man geek, there were so many things that I could just latch on to. And it gave me something new, something that I hadn't seen before. Um, yeah, and parallel universes, they're just fun. Uh, all these possibilities. So, yeah, I was very, very into this film. So, yeah, I think we should just move into the spoiler section. So we can dig deep. Any objections? No. Nope. No. Good. Let's do that. Okay, so first up we have our Q&A section. And we actually have some questions from people who are totally real for a change. <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> No, I would never make fake questions, honestly. No, it's, uh, these are all real people who had real questions, so thank you everyone who asked. Uh, first up we have Mark, who asked, How long do you think it will take before Gwen Stacy is better known as Spider-Gwen rather than Peter Parker's dead girlfriend? So Some good ball. question. Yeah, yeah, actually, and and uh, I, I, I actually think that that we're that we're we're actually uh, quite uh, quite a big chunk of the way there already. I think it may have already um, happened. Oh, because okay, certainly, like for quite a large percentage right, of of people who are like, who who know who know Spider Man, um, they they uh, they will perceive like 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 that they love his they love his life as as being as being Mary Jane rather than Gwen, um. Unless yeah, well, your yeah, first yeah. exposure was the Amazing Spider-Man films. True, yeah, but if that was the case, then I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> and that, and that's a situation that that I've it's it's, it's, what, it's what's frustrated me because because I always always much preferred uh, Gwen um, over over MJ uh, just because. Just because, because I think I think I was, I also thought she was, she was a much more interesting and and relatable character. Yeah, yeah, it's just because 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 like it's, she she was like somebody somebody who somebody who who you could, who you could like imagine actually getting on with and, and that, that, actually actually ha- actually having fun being with her, where whereas Mary Jane was uh, was like, was introduced as like as this kind of like idealistic fantasy girl. Of, of like of like somebody of like of of uh, some somebody who who you're supposed to want because she's just so amazing and beautiful and perfect, yeah, but without actually without necessarily caring who she is, unless she's played by Kristen Dunst, in which case she's a real drag. Or at least well, that, that that was the way I always perceived it anyway. No, I'm, it, not, I'm not sure about other people. No, I see where you're coming from. I think the the Gwen character is is interesting in the sense that because. I mean, in, in the comics, she isn't that interesting. It's kind of people have latched on her, largely speaking, sort of retroactively, you know, after her death. And at the point it happened in the comics, it was almost like a reaffirmation of his origin story. You know, it was at the point where his life was going okay. Uh, he was starting to think about, you know, getting in, getting married and, and what his life was going to be after that. And then suddenly something horrible happens and he's suddenly reminded of all the times that I don't act quickly enough, people might die, and it sort of brings back the whole responsibility thing. So it's it's sort of an origin refresher in a way, and it's something that you know it's guilt that he carries with him this entire time. So I think if you read Spider-Man comics at the moment, she'll probably get brought up now and again, um, whenever he's feeling particularly down. You know, he'll, he'll think about Gwen, um, but on the whole, I think you've got the. The ongoing Spider Gwen series. She's in a couple of cartoons. She's in this film. So there'll be a lot of people that won't know anything about the older version of Gwen Stacy. Uh, a lot of younger people. So yeah, I think it could be that it's already happened. At least for a chunk of the audience. Well, isn't the next film going to focus on like her and like some of the other Spider Women? Supposedly, yeah. Yeah, so I think like if it if it isn't now, then it definitely will be by, by if then. that's the next one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then eventually, though, yeah, she'll have a prominent role in that whatever it's called Marvel Rising cartoon series. So young people will see that. 
Um, the Emma Stone version might be still recent enough for people to be aware of it, or people to get into Spider Man through that, those films. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one. I mean, I, I can't think of any. I can't think of many characters of, or side characters that have gone through such a radical reinvention that's brought them into this kind of the the spotlight in in quite the same way. I'm going to echo Andrew in that I like her more than MJ. Um, but my introduction to her was the Amazing Spider-Man films. And I, I didn't know much about her before. So to me, she was pretty much Spider-Man's dead girlfriend. Yeah. So this film definitely introduced her as a, a different sort of character. I love that she was like a trained dancer and that she brought like ballet into like her her spidering. Like I love that. Um as as a former ballerina myself, I was like I I love that she's wearing ballet shoes. This is the <laughs> sweetest. I love it. Um but also, you know, like she's fierce and tough and smart. Um she's always, you know, the the smart intern who's like you know she works at all these science companies and you know it is is very much like like a strong female character who deserves to be in the limelight as much as any of these male protagonists and so i'm i'm here for her and i i loved this version of her and the idea of seeing her again i'm very excited about yeah, in the comics, she was very much sort of a character, but Peter's girlfriend, and that's kind of how she was written. Uh, but as most kind of love interest characters were at that time in in comics, but her death was like significant. It was like a first, you know. It was the first time that, pretty much the first time that a superhero's love interest had been killed off, without it servicing their origin story. So it was it was a huge shock at the time, and it's a story that still sort of resonates to this day. And I just can't believe they arsed it up in the Amazing Spider-Man Two. They just made a complete mess of it. Uh, just, yeah, you just completely missed the point of how significant this was supposed to be. Let's just tack it on. I mean, it was significant minutes. for like five minutes, yeah, and then minutes. there were more villains. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I definitely felt the impact of that moment, but because that film was so messy, I do agree that the the it, it gets lost. <laughs> as as does a lot of you know like they they fudged up um harry osborne in that film which i will never forgive because yeah. i love the relationship between peter and harry and that friendship that turned sour i thought that th they would give it time to like develop and turn sour in its own time you know like give it another film it would have been great, but instead it was just squished. Everything just happened at the same time. It was a lot. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, there'd be nothing to stop them introducing this sort of g version of Gwen Stacy in the MCU, really. I mean, because there is no Gwen Stacy at this point uh, in, in Peter Parker's life. So they could sort of splinter it off and, and bring her in that way. I'm not sure how well that would work, but it's a possibility. And something that I I would be open to personally. I mean, they've so far they've been really good about um, introducing strands from different comic book arcs and making them into one solid sort of timeline in the MCU. So yeah. I'd be interested to see how they would do that. Um, but yeah, yeah. So to answer your question, Mark, it's happening. And it won't be long before it's more or less cemented, apart from people like me who, you know, know, know the significance and so on, uh, from way, way back. So, next question from Stephen, who has two questions. He is, uh, he's greedy. Um, if only the rights business didn't get in the way of movie making, I'd personally love to see a live-action Blade and Spidey team up against Morbius like the 90s cartoon. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, if rights weren't an issue, are there any Spider-Man live-action team-ups slash storylines you'd love to see brought to the big screen? Uh, I'm just going to go right in with Fantastic Four. I think it's always great to see him team up with the Fantastic Four. It was one of the first things that he did in the comics. He has a great friendship with Johnny Storm. He's very much part of their family uh, in the comics. And I just want to see that. I want to see that happen. I would love to see an X-Men team-up. Um yeah. 
I mean, you know, the messy as that would be, and I'm sure will be because <laughs> it's in the horizon. Um, I don't know what they are planning for it, and I'm skeptical because we've had we've already had too many X Men movies. Um, but that being said, uh, it's one of my absolute favorite uh, groups of characters in comics, in Marvel comics. Just, yeah, I love them. Uh, the, they were, the, so X Men comics were the first comics I ever read. Um, and I followed them for quite a while. And, uh, the, yeah, I would love to see that sort of team up with Spider Man. That would be amazing. Uh, you should watch the two parter in the 90s cartoon where he teams up with the X Men. And riffs off Wolverine really well. Oh, I shall. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what the episode titles are, and you can have a look. Uh, yeah, that that'd be fun. Uh, in the Ultimate Comics, they uh, matched his age with Kitty Pride, so they were both like sixteen. So they were nice. in a relationship for a little while. Mm. Uh, I don't know if they should do that, but you know, it's they could do if they make the X Men of the MCU sort of the teenagers at a school thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of my absolute favorite things, and that's a little uh, controversial because you could say it wasn't very good, but I was really into it, was um, X-Men Evolution, the animated series, where they're all teenagers. Uh, That, it was one of my absolute favorite things when I was a teenager because everybody was my age and they all got to like hang out together and uh, you know like my favorite was Nightcrawler who was just like this emo kid and he wasn't like some weird praying you know overly religious dude. (laughs) Um, it was interesting having all the characters be the same age except for like a handful who had to be the teachers Um, so you know you'd have the the surly Wolverine who you know grumbles at the children Um, it was good I I really enjoyed it Um, so yeah to see Spider-Man in that sort of mix would be awesome and that was where they introduced X-23 I think that cartoon as well it was yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah that'd be cool uh, Andrew, who would you like to see him team up with? Well, well, well the, the one I go for it, I, it would actually be, wouldn't actually be so much of, much of a team up. It would be uh, more, uh, more kind of a mutual antagonism. Because uh, I would, I would like, I would uh, quite like to, to see uh, Spider Man and the Punisher together. Uh, the the John Bernthal uh, Punisher, possibly, or or, or just like. <laughs> Or, or, or just like, or just like a, a, a version of of, of a Punisher, mm. uh, just, uh, just, uh, just just because it's because uh, in it's in the in the comics, like I, I, whenever whenever Spider Man and Punisher appear appear, um, appear, uh, appear appear together, like like they usually usually end up uh, at, uh, odds, with, odds with each other, just people uh, because they they because they they have diametric opposite uh, way. way Ways of operating when it comes to how to deal with the villains that they that they fight, and I uh, and I think expo- exploring that dynamic on on screen could, could actually be, be quite interesting. The Punisher's first appearance was in a Spider-Man comic as well. That was his very first appearance. It wasn't like Not a sure I, story. I, I think you that. Yeah, he gets hired by the Jackal to kill Spider-Man, and then he realizes that the Jackal's not a very nice guy and turns against him. So. There you go. Um, yeah, I think. Could you imagine poor little Tom Holland against John Bernthal's Punisher? I think it would, he'd be terrified. That, that just wouldn't seem fair. Yeah, um, it'd be like if he was going to fight D'Onofrio's kingpin. It's like, nah, I'll just go <laughs> home. It's fine. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going near this guy. Uh, Isaac, who would you like to see him team up? I'm going to go with this, another Netflix one, but I want to see uh, Tom Holland Spider Man and. Kirsten Witt as Jessica Jones team up because <laughs> he'd be like oh I'd turn up and she'd be like it's nine in the morning I can't be dealing with this like <laughs> whiny child it'd be so fun just to watch like someone who's clearly far too hungover to deal with everything you're saying and yes she's just, oh like, my god I would love that that would be out. amazing yep. <laughs> uh, and in the comics Jessica Jones was apparently in Peter Parker's class at school oh yeah. Uh, I think that was added way, 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 way later. But yeah, mm. apparently she was, and she had a crush on him before he was Spider Man. Of course she did, because he's cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
nonsense. But yeah, this version of Jessica Jones in the Netflix shows, as much as I dislike <laughs> her after season two, it would be funny to see her bounce off Tom Holland, who's just all youthful and energetic, and she's like, get away from me. It's like, is that alcohol I can smell? I'm, not, I'm too young to drink it. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, good choices for team-ups. Uh, I'll throw in an extra one with Daredevil. The, the Charlie Cox Daredevil, because I think that'd be... I mean, in the comics, I always like the the dynamic that they have. And I think having Matt Murdock be that bit older than him would be interesting to see. Um, I'm not sure how Tom Holland's Spider-Man could fit into the darkness of the Daredevil series, so maybe, maybe Daredevil needs to come to him and experience things that aren't quite so violent. I don't know. But I'd like to see it. Hmm. Generally, I mean, like, yes, like, I would love to see that um, sort of Netflix contingent, the the Defenders, with the Brooklyn kid, the the Tom Holland version. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, cool. And Stephen's second question was, which version of Spidey was your favourite? I presume it means in this film. So I'll, I'll limit it to this film. I like the Peter Parker, the second one. Um, I mean, the, well, all right, you, the Nicholas Cage was also Peter Parker, but I like the, the second one, the the burnt out loser version, because <laughs> I just found him the most interesting. Because um, hmm. the thing is, like, in some ways, you could see Peter Parker as being a little bit like a child actor. You know, he becomes a superhero when he's young. He has no context for this sort of thing. He doesn't know what he's doing. And when it comes to the point where he has to start thinking about what to do with his life, maybe he is a bit... He has got a bit of a arrested development. He's just... Yeah, because in this one, it's... You know, he, his wife wanted to, to have kids, and he was like, no, I can't have kids. And he just... And he just sort of spirals into this little self-destructive thing. And I quite like that you have this down-on-the-luck version of the character, and it doesn't need the end of the world to turn him into that. He's just defeated by life. <laughs> and that's you know that's very Spider-Man, and that's very Peter Parker. His life is just a mess some of the time, so it's it's cool to see that. Just twenty years later, if he keeps acting the same way, if he never improves, if he never thinks of new ways of approaching problems, this is what he turns into. And that's why I, li- I like that version. I think he was, yeah, I think he, I thought he was great in in this film. Uh, so Andrew, what was your favourite? Um, I'm actually, I'm actually going to go, going to go with Gwen because um, even even though she, she's about about the, the same uh, same age as Miles, because she's like uh, so much more skilled and she's and co- fifteen months older. It's oh, of course, yes, <laughs> yeah. She she is so much more competent um, at, at the whole spider personing than uh, than than he is. But, and I, th- I think I think that actually uh, provides like uh, quite. Uh, quite a uh, good base, basis, uh, basis, basis, basis for for comparison because she's she's uh, she's uh, st- uh, still uh, still uh, uh, very, uh, very 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 young. Yeah, but but he's also also some somebody who at the same time uh, has been has been battling like uh, like like a, a bunch of supervillains presumably, and that gives like like uh, some some kind of indication of oh, kind of hero who the Miles should aim to. Like to 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 actually be like at least in 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 the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, she was good. Um, hard pressed to say that the the any of them weren't that good. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with your points on, um, on why she was good. So, go, cool. uh, Kat, what was your favourite? I have to absolutely agree with Andrew about everything he said about Gwen. <laughs> yes. Um, but to add a little bit of spice to the to the mix, I really liked uh, the little girl. Penny. Penny Parker. Yeah. Uh, and her robot and her cute little spider and just like the anime aesthetic of it all, like the random Japanese words. Uh, my my yeah. heart lit up. Yes, my heart lit up every time she was on screen. I love her. Um, and she's a version that I had not heard of before at all. Um, it, it was one of those like really surprising, like, oh, I guess there's so much in the comics that I haven't come in touch with, like on any level. Um, yeah, but I really, really enjoyed her. Yeah. Yeah, she was good. I like that she was always snacking. 
I don't know, I thought it was just a nice little detail. Every time she was doing something, yeah. she had a bag of sweets. Just <laughs> yeah, relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in a robot fighting bad guys while munching on. Whatever. Same. <laughs> yeah. Isaac, who was your favourite? Oh, I'm glad we all, so my favourite was Miles Morales, so I'm glad we all picked a different one. <laughs> it, was like the, it was like, well, it's always a fun seeing like, the journey from the start. But I love that he was really eager to try and, like, his spirit never given up. And even when he was, like, situations where it's impossible to react, where, like, you have to steal that computer. But he's like, he'll just take the monitor, because he'll just take it, like, he hasn't got time to think about, oh, we don't need a monitor. He's just grabbing <laughs> everything. He's like, let's just go, let's get this. And I love, like, and, like, he's like, yeah, the more, like, the determination of him and just, just somebody really... Like, he's been given, like, just a taste of this, like, new life. They, obviously, like, Spider-Man's in his universe is super, you know, is just well-known as, like, the standard one. So he's, like, and he's, like, he's eager to, to get it. And, like, he won't, like, let every other fact, like, all the factors of, like, he's literally only been doing it for, like, a day, get in his way. Which I think is, like, like, that's all really, like, this, that's, like, a proper sort of superhero, like, style thingy of... It's not about like you know having the right training or having enough time to do it. It's just reacting at the, that very moment, which I think yeah. makes him like the most, like the the most entertaining sort of one to watch. Yeah, yeah. Miles was great, and we will come back to him, of course, because that's what the film is about. Uh, our next question is from John. We have two questions from different Johns, perhaps from different universes. Who knows? But this one's a bit of a weird one. I don't know how much mileage we'll get out of it, but you know we'll ask it anyway. Why doesn't Spider-Man produce silk from four spinnerets in his abdomen in the way real spiders do? Uh, because it would be far less cool to be, shoot the web yeah. from his belly button. <laughs> it's just not cool. Yeah. Um, th- I've been watching this anime recently yeah. called My Hero Academia. Yes. Yeah, and like, there's this guy who shoots a laser from his belly button, <laughs> and he is arguably the least cool in the whole class, um, because that's all he can do. Like, he, and he, you know, like projects this intense laser light <laughs> from his belly button. It's just extra for no reason. Um, so, John, I'm sorry, but it just wouldn't be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, the webbing isn't a power that he gets anyway, uh, for some reason. Uh, it's just yeah, he gets everything else, but he doesn't get the the webbing. Uh, he has to make that himself. Although in the comics, it was suggested that the spider passed on the knowledge of how to make the web fluid, which is a bit silly. But you know, it's a comic book written in the sixties, so you know. There's it's a really silly. good, there's a really good Doctor Strange comic where Spider Man he takes a spider to Doctor Strange who can talk to a real spider. And it sort of tells him, like, make sure you make the most of our time because you've taken on our lifespan as well, so you only have one to two years to do it. And it's like, why? Well, it's like, I've taken on these, like, you've taken on the power of us, so you've also taken on, like, our one to two year lifespan. And it just leaves, like, Dr. Strange is like, oh, how do you find it? Was it good? He's like, I want to go home. I have to go home. <laughs> like, just, just distraught. So it's really sort of thing, I think, like, similar, like, all those extra little Spider Man, like, spider life thingamajigs that would be super weird if that actually had, like, it would be a, a much sadder comic if it was you just turned into like it took every available aspect of a spider yeah eating so many flies <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would be it would be dumb so so yeah John because we don't think it's cool and neither did the, neither did Stan Lee or Steve Ditko so that's why uh, it's lucky that the Tobey Maguire version got the the web sacks in his wrists that was really lucky because it could have been so much worse yeah uh, so, the next question is from John from Another Earth, we'll say. Uh, this one is probably going to be one that maybe just me and Andrew will know anything about. Uh, Isaac, you might as well. Okay. But, uh, in the House of M storyline, everyone thought that Spider-Man was a mutant. Surely a DNA test would show he was an enhanced human. So why wasn't he tested? Um, I'm going to go um, with, well, it was written uh, by Brian Michael Bendis, and he doesn't think about these sorts of things. I've, I've only read House of M once, and it was... I, a while ago, I think I remember it being mentioned at some point um, that, like that, 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 um, that, that, that in that in that reality, uh, I, I, I be, uh, being a mutant uh, wasn't, I, it wasn't like a, a single 
kind of mutation. Like it, it, it wasn't it wasn't just the X gene. Then like like, like being mutant like like was was like was was, was like was like sort of millions of small aspects of some of these some of these some of these genetic makeup. And at some point, I think it was Beast who who said that. Um, like that, that it was that it was too complicated, like to 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 like to 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 actually figure to actually figure out, and isn't something that that would that would um they they could see getting getting done like in the, in his lifetime. And isn't that the weirdly the opposite of what Beast would normally say? Science, ah, this will take too long. Can't be bothered with that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Um. I should explain what House of M is. It's basically an alternate reality set up by Scarlet Witch because she's upset. Uh, where, where mutants reign supreme uh, and there's all sorts of little changes to it uh, Captain America is like the first man on the moon because he doesn't die or he doesn't get frozen during World War 2 uh, Peter Parker is like a celebrity who's actually secretly the Green Goblin because he's mental um, I think Iron Man's like a cage fighter or some nonsense like that it's, it's weird, I mean comics are weird but it's weird uh, it's a good-ish story but yeah, I, I don't really have an answer to that one. Uh, you just answered it perfectly, so you remembered it better than I did. And I've only read it once as well. There you go. I think that will satisfy John's craving for an answer to that question. Score. Yeah. Oh, I think was it. Like if ever something, something like that happens, a wizard did it. A wizard did it. Well, basically that's what it was. Oh, oh yeah, it was that. This one looks like it's a witch. Yeah, a witch. Yeah. Last question I have is from Ronnie. Uh, who says, why has no one thought to give Nicholas Hammond a cameo in a Spidey movie? I have wondered this myself. Uh, for those that don't know, Nicholas Hammond played the very first live-action version of Spider-Man in a really, really terrible TV series. Well, it was like a series of TV movies, wasn't it? It was like three or four of them, and it wasn't very good. Um, you see him sort of you get <laughs> climbing the walls and getting raised on a rope, and he sort of obliquely touches it as he's as he's climbing but it's clear he's just been dragged up on a rope it's really ridiculous uh i suppose for the time it would be innovative but maybe nicholas hammond doesn't want to be in spider-man stuff yeah 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 well and perhaps uh looking, looking back on them that he kind of recognized it as a bit terrible and don't really want to draw people's people's attention to them again yeah although the 90s cartoon uh, Peter Parker's look was based on Nicholas Hammond a little bit. Hmm. He looks a bit like him. So there, yeah. Anyone else any opinions on why Nicholas Hammond is not featured? It's a weird little part of Spidey lore that they just forget about, I suppose. Or don't know about. <laughs> yeah, well, not, not that many people. Speaking know, for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to ask Craig yesterday if that was someone who was dead. Well, and I had to look it up. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Um, but thanks, Ronnie. I was going to make a joke and say Nicholas Hammond asks why does no one give Nicholas Hammond cameos in here. But, uh, thank you, Ronnie. So that's the last of the questions I have. Kat, I believe you have one from an audience member. I do indeed. So Savan asks, what do you think of the Christmas album and also the other soundtrack albums from the movie? I think it's the most William Shatner thing Chris Pine has ever done, and that includes the three times he played William Shatner. <laughs> I, I have movie. to admit, I wasn't aware of it. Oh, you weren't? Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I didn't know when we got the question. I was like, the what now? <laughs> <laughs> and then I found it, and I was like, oh... I love this. <laughs> Low key, <Yeah>. that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like four or five tracks, and some of the cast contribute to it in different ways. the The particular one is the Spidey Bells one, which plays, or a portion of it plays over the end credits, <laughs> where he just uh, suddenly has a breakdown in the middle of it and says, "What am I doing? <laughs> and uh, why why did I cash in? And what have I done? I have um, a degree in chemical engineering." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the most William Shatner thing that Chris Pine has ever done. I'm going to stick with that. Maybe that could be like, you know, on the tagline of the album. You know, it's printed on the back of the CD case. It's funny. I mean, it's funny just like everything else is in the film. Uh, in terms of the other soundtrack, uh, not aware of most of the music that was in it. I like the original score, though. That was really good. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love the I love the original score. I thought that, like, it just brought, like, such 
a modern like spin on all of it. Like it was, oh, it was really quirky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just like really quirky and catchy music, but also the cinematic sort of orchestral bits were awesome. Uh, but it was synthy and techno enough that like it wasn't your regular movie soundtrack. It just had a bit a bit extra pizzazz to it, uh, which was great. And also like the music inspired by like the w- with the actual. Um, sort of songs that were in the movie and then some other stuff. Great. Great. Just great. I'm, I'm always concerned that putting sort of contemporary songs into a film will date it. Uh, mm. to some, you know, so you'll, you'll watch this film in like 15 years and you'll hear this song that was out 15 years ago and oh yeah, that. It's a bit like whenever um, that Chad Kroger song <laughs> appears on the oh yeah. yeah it's yeah. very it's very 2004 yes yeah. <laughs> or you know Venom now mm-hmm. uh, yeah that was already dated when, the, when it was done but uh, mm. yeah. oh, bloody Venom yeah uh, that thing, <laughs> that, that thing. Um, yeah any other thoughts on the music Andrew or Isaac I love the Prowler music I mean like of all the that was cool of all the I think of all this like the score moments that was like really effective. It was just terrifying. I think the best use of actually, I mean, I'm guessing it's a contemporary song. I've not heard it, but it uh, was the you know the leap of faith sequence uh, yeah. where Miles comes into his own. I thought that was really well, really. Well oh, performed. that was like yeah, chills, like actual yeah. actual goosebumps. Yeah, mm-hmm. the score was absolutely sublime and uh, just to, just to say as as with um as with most christmas music i was kind of ambivalent to it really <laughs> to, to that aspect <laughs> fair enough yeah does that make a uh, spider-verse a christmas film <laughs> oh boy here we go again <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I look forward to writing that list in 10 years time and and having, mm-hmm. yeah Okay, so that is all our questions, I think. I don't think anybody else has anything else. So thank you, all people who asked questions. Uh, really good. Love questions. Makes me seem like I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes. Yeah, uh, so kind of on to... I mean, we, we touched on Miles throughout, but sort of the focus on Miles as a, as a character. I like that they just went and did it. You know, it's like Miles Morales. Everyone knows Peter Parker... What more can be said about Peter Parker? I mean, plenty, but you know the um, audiences be well aware of him. The the sort of risk of will people accept another person as Spider Man? You know, will a general audience accept it? Um, and it starts off really well because you get the Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Here's how I'm Spider Man, and then you know, then it just pans out and it's Miles sitting drawing while listening to music, and then it's you know, so it gives you that kind of familiar in. And then you just focus on Miles the rest of the time, and he doesn't get overpowered by the other versions of Spider or the other Spider people that are kicking about either. It's still very much his story, and I like that they all vanish at the end and let him finish mm. it off, because that's you know then it brings it right back to him. This is something that he has to do. He has to do it on his own, otherwise he won't learn anything. It was, it was certainly a good, a good idea, like to 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 have. To have the have the focal character uh, uh, not not be Peter Parker, just uh, but, uh, because because that's I uh, mentioned that's been that's been done so many times previously, and certainly if he's uh, if he's uh, go- going to be high school age, uh, the, uh, the, the, then then you just uh, end, end up re- retreading a lot of old ground, and, and also, also uh, because Miles is a, rel- a relatively recent addition, then I would imagine that a fair chunk of, of the audience uh, wouldn't wouldn't won't actually be aware of him as as a character, whereas pretty much everybody is aware of who who Peter Parker is, and so exploring him as 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 a, as a character uh, might not have been as interesting as it was with Miles, um, because he because he's is, 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 is like a new character being being, being introduced, Every, and everything that they reveal about him and and ever, everything everything that, that we see about him is is, is something new. And and that and that and that just makes him so, so much more interesting. Like like uh, right 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 off the bat. I have to completely agree. Yeah. And this version of Miles is vastly different to the comic book version as well. Uh, when he was first introduced, he was very much just Peter Parker again, and they didn't really know what to do with him. Um, but since then, there's been a couple of adaptations of him, and they've all tried to do something a little bit different with them. And this one is the first version where I'm like, this is 
his own thing. You know, he's got his own stamp on it. I like the graffiti artist angle, and I really like how that informs his costume design. You know, so you've got the Miles Morales costume, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it's it's very close to the comic book version, except it's very homemade because he spray paints a Spider-Man suit in his own style. And I, I liked that that was, you know, the catalyst for him finding himself was his art. And they introduced that early on. I thought it was a great touch. I quite like that as well. It did seem like for, for quite a lot of the film, he, like, he was essentially just, just trying to be Peter Parker. And it wasn't until, 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 wasn't until he realised that he, he needed to be Miles Morales rather than a cheap knockoff of, of, of somebody else. And it wasn't, wasn't until that point that he tru- tru- like, truly kind of became, became himself as a potential hero. And it was that moment like, when he was playing his own costume that fully informed that. Yeah. Definitely. Saying like what I was, what I said before when I said like he was my favourite of the the like the Spider Man in this film. I think he's just the most. I don't know. I think it's because you but you wanted to do well the more like cause you really wanted him to like you really gone in for him. So I think that's what like his big appeal is. It's a bit of a shame to find out that like his comic book versions aren't the same as him though. Because I think I really like this version. <laughs> or at least I hopefully they they sort of put more of this. Miles Morales into like the other other like formats that he appears in. I haven't read a Miles Morales comic in a while, but um, most of my exposure to him is fairly early on. So, but when mm-hmm. he was early on, it was very much the he is Peter Parker, but Peter Parker's his uncle Ben. You know, that's the death that that inspires him in effect. But um, yeah, what you'll probably see happening is if they haven't done it already, is some of the traits from this version will start bleeding into the comic. You know, in the same way that. Iron Man now looks a bit like Robert Downey Jr. and he's very smart mouthed when he when he didn't used to be, you know, stuff like that. But the version that they created here was was great, and I like that they built them from the ground up. You know, they didn't feel beholden to the original version, and there was confidence in what they wanted to do uh, with him, which which is new. And I like his background. The relationship with his parents feels real. Um, I like that they survive until the end of the film, although his uncle dies, which is the kind of Peter Parker parallel in a way, but. Um, yeah, just yeah, it was, it was all very well put together, all very well set up. What about his relationship or with Peter, the the Peter Parker that he spends most of the mm-hmm. film with? Um, what did we think of how that works and how that helps him along in his development? Uh, I thought it was great because um, that version of Peter gets as much out of it as Miles does. You know, he starts to grow up a bit when he realizes that he can be a help helpful to other people he can he can still be useful uh, people can look up to him you know all the stuff that he thought he'd lost is still there he just needed to find it again and, and I like that they can they complement each other really well the the sort of training sequence where they're trying to get away from uh, mm-hmm. from Liv was, was really good because you know they both got really excited because they were swinging together and it was great uh, it was just oh my god I'm, you're learning you're learning it's great I love that sequence. I thought it was quite interesting because because uh, this this version of of Peter is, is so is so much different, like from from how he, how he's usually he's usually portrayed. Because because quite often Peter Peter, uh, Peter is someone someone who who's like, who's who's really who's really bright and, and optimistic, whereas this is is someone who's basically given up. Yeah, so and can barely see, see the point of the point of, it, of anything anymore, and because that's such a such a such contrast to to how to how we you, we usually see him, uh, then like him him being with Miles and and being reminded like, of, of 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 what it was like, it's like to to actually have enthusiasm about enthusiasm about uh, being Spider Man, and uh, that's uh, effectively like like becoming a, a, a proper Spider Man again, in, in, as, in as much as. What he's teaching Miles is is allowing Miles to become a proper Spider Man. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Like that that was my my favorite thing about how they they included Peter in this because of course we know Peter and of course we expect to see a Peter Parker. What do you mean no Peter Parker? You know, but that was the perfect way to pass the baton. Um, and. Like, the idea of there being the two different Peter Parkers as well was just, like, a really interesting take to have, like, the one Peter who's, like, successful and young and good at everything, um, and then the other one who's, like, perhaps more along the lines of, like, 
the the Toby Maguire <laughs> Peter Parker, if that makes sense, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, yeah, it was a brilliant way to do it. Does anyone else feel robbed of the, uh, the Spider Man four where he tries to set up his own restaurant chain and fails? <laughs> I know that that would have made a great movie. <laughs> it was TGI Spidey's is disgusting. Yeah, I just, I, I just, I just, I, just, I just uh, uh, love the moment when, when it was like this flashback to Spider Man three of him, him like striding down the street doing finger guns. It's like, yeah, I, I also did this. We don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the successful version. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then. Um, it's hilarious that they got Chris Pine to voice the, you know, the idealistic or the idealized version of Spider-Man. It's just, you know, his performance is just so. I mean, it's not quite cheesy heroic, but it's along those lines. You know, there's, um, you know, it's, it's like the yeah, I never lose sort of mentality, and then he just gets like brutally beaten by the kingpin uh, and killed. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the point of it was was that he was he, like it's he was, he was meant to be like. Like like a representation of of like how of like how how of how people perceive Spider Man. Yeah. It's like it's like this this like it's like this like, it's like utter utter paragon of perfection. Yeah. And then seeing him half crushed to death and then callously murdered, like it's it's all the more impacting because of that. Yeah. Uh, it's like that. I always get back up, and then yeah, he's just killed. Um, whereas you've got the the other version. He's been kind of meandering along for twenty years somehow managing to succeed along the way you know managing to stay alive managing to you know constantly win um but having his his life is just a mess as a result and yeah that's a as i said earlier that's kind of more in line with how um how i see spider-man as in he never quite gets it together even at the points that he does seem like he gets it together it's going to come crashing down on him at some point because it always does because comic writers like to mash that reset button Oh God, do they! Yeah. You need to get back to the penniless, clueless uh, guy in his mid twenties that doesn't know what he's doing. And um, I suppose this one, what would have been in his late thirties, early forties? Mm-hmm. You know, but the, the the principle is the same. He's just yeah, he has nothing, um, but learns to or learns to reclaim whatever it was he had before um, through through coaching Miles. And, uh, and I like that Miles is kind of less than impressed with him. <laughs> on, he's get, why do I have to get the, the useless version? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why couldn't the good one have survived? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, this. are we going to swing there? No, we'll take the bus. And then they take the bus back. And then they take the bus later in the film. So, yeah. <laughs> um, it, and it was a great, good partnership. And I think... Um, you know, it's it's having your cake and eating it too, isn't it? It's, you know, you get to do the Miles Morales story, but you still have Peter Parker as a prominent part in it. And um, so it's almost like not quite ready to just let Miles stand on his own, but the film ends with him standing on his own. Exactly. The passing the baton, like, you yeah. know, okay, Peter Parker, we've done like three different versions. We all know the story. Let's just move on to a different universe of Spider-Man. Like, yes. Yeah, um, let's tell a different story. Let's do something new. Yeah, and I like the sort of little changes they made. So the um, the Chris Pine version has his little, you know, spider cave uh, with all his stuff in it, which includes the Spider Mobile, which I had a hearty chuckle at uh, when I saw it, uh, and all his costumes. You know, that's like Iron Man's Hall of Armor, and it's like this is what Spider Man could be if he had his stuff together. Um, but he never will because that's not who he is. It's quite nice to see sort of like just while he was really struggling. It's just nice to see like well not struggling but he's just just living a human life. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and he you know, he can't go back on his mistakes and he has to just sort of plod through and it's it's getting harder and harder for him to like look after himself and keep up with stuff and he's kind of just descending. Uh, so it is nice like, so, like he's not realising that he's sort of teaching himself things when he's teaching Miles stuff and it's sort of like yeah, kickstarting him back into the thingy but I don't think like 
I don't think he, at the end of the film he's become like back to being the sort of Chris Pine style one. I think it's going to be like a, mer a mix of both the, you know, lived a, you know, lived through a struggle period of his life, Peter Parker, but also like a bit more light-hearted, but not as much as like you know the standard one. Well, yeah, I think I think it's about the willingness to to fix his life rather than he instantly fixes it. So you know, the last last you see of him is he's you know he takes flowers to his version of MJ, uh, which doesn't you know I, I get the suggestion that it won't be um, overnight fix, but he has the motivation, uh, and he'll obviously experience issues along the way, and maybe we'll get to see what he's like in another film at some point. You know what what happens to this version next because. He's probably the oldest version of Peter Parker we've ever seen outside of like side, you know, what if style style uh, style stories, such as that weird po post apocalyptic one where he where MJ is dead and he's ancient. Um, what's that called again? I can't remember what it's called. Doesn't matter. But yeah, it's that. It, it's it's not very good. Uh, but yeah, I, I like that. That was kind of a believable. You could see Peter Parker going this way. In terms of Gwen, you know, as you said earlier, Andrew, she was very much a peer. You know, she was kind of on his level. Um, she could maybe relate to him in the sense that she recently went through what he's going through, uh, has the powers, doesn't know what to do with them. Although he's, she seems sort of jealous of the fact that he didn't have to do it alone initially. You know, where they all did. They all had to figure it out on their own, whereas Miles had help and... He has that support, and uh, that's kind of unique to him in that respect. Because this is all of their universes have no other superheroes in them, apparently. I think, and um, there was also the factor that that for Gwen, like the defining death like, in in her origin was uh, her Pete, who was who was her best her best friend. And th I think, like for uh, her uh, development, uh, losing someone who, who's that who's that close to you um, as as a friend, uh, it's a different loss from from, lo from losing a family member. Yeah, I was kind of get the impression that that in 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 Miles, Gwen was seeing like the, the potential of, of of how her Peter could 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 have been to her if he if he if he had survived. Yeah. Although, isn't it a bit weird that she doesn't seem to react to meeting a version of Peter Parker? You know, she, she kind of takes it in her stride and doesn't. Let That's bother. true. Yeah, 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 she yeah, does. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 did bug me actually. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. I think in much in much the same way that Peter didn't react to seeing to meeting a version of Gwen. Well, there's no evidence that Gwen Stacy was ever a part of any of those Peter Parker's lives uh, in those universes. And I suppose they might be trying to divorce it from the whole this version of Gwen, you know, Gwen Stacy died type thing. Um, cause it Actually, just yeah, that works. But, um, but yeah, it's just weird. How it's like, oh look, is that is that not weird that you're seeing a thirty year old version of? You know, thirty-year-older version of the your best friend that you recently saw die. It's like, nah, it's fine. I know it's not him. And you have that moment where um, Peter talks to MJ, and she's like, "It's not your MJ." Um, but that was about it. That was about the only reference. You know that she'd somehow managed to accept it, but yeah, weird. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it would have taken up quite a bit of time uh, and maybe slowed the film down a bit, but it is a weird one. She doesn't have friends anymore because she can't bring herself to let someone in in that way. Uh, it was a pretty simple arc, but it was a good one. You know, the idea that, oh no, I do have friends and they all have spider powers, so that's fine. They live in different universes, so that's that's not so fine. That's, that makes it a bit harder. It's a it's a nice riff on that. Oh yeah, I've got friends. They go to different schools. You wouldn't know them. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do, how does she manage to get herself enrolled at a school? You know, That's you know. a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or or even um, uh, oh, I forget the, uh, the 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 name of the company now. The Doc Ox, like the Alchemax. Yes. Yeah. Because she was because she was. She had her finger in that pie too, and I was yeah. like, "Okay, like because we meet her there." Like for a moment, I thought she was part of that universe. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like, oh, "Okay, like 
the the revelation that she isn't is like, well, hang on then. <laughs> how did that how did that happen? And she'd only been there a week. Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> Well, she's just really good at infiltrating. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, well, well I, I decided to, uh, is, uh, just just because, like, just because, like, she was such a genius, and she she um she she's able she was able to in, engage like in some kind of like hacking computer trickery to get herself like to get herself like on the list of accepted people at these places. Maybe she tied up the real Gwen Stacy, who already had those things. Well, say the real Quinn Stacy, the one that belongs to that universe. Maybe she did that. Fan theory, head cannon, whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever works. Yeah. Well, she was kind of like the not like exposition, but she was the one who knew what was going on, wasn't she? Yeah. So like, yeah. So her role was like to kind of like sort of like our second mentor, but like so he had like Peter Parker, who's like the. Yeah, you know, the hero, the one you look up to, and then Grace says she's the one who's really knows how it actually works, and is the one to talk to, sort of one. And the one who's got a good hand on it, and well, and it's handy also that like he meets her in the school and stuff, and well, obviously we know that like that's just her. Like, and she she's spying on him, isn't she? Or she's like, something's going on, which has worked out someone's there's a Spider-Man in this universe or something, I think. She's following him around, isn't she? Is that the film? Well, yeah, it was, she says her spider sense told her to go to this place. Oh, that's it, yeah. yeah so, yeah, she knows why. something is going up yeah. in that area. She's a bit of a catalyst, I suppose. Yeah, she gets things moving. She explains things. Uh, she's the one that gets them to go to Aunt May's house. Because, uh, you know, the plot needs to move on and someone needs to move it on. Yeah, she was good. As a side note, that you said Aunt May's house. Can yeah. we just take a second... To celebrate Aunt May and her freaking basement and just like the high tech everything and just her being a boss. Like, I yeah. loved her. Yes, she was magnificent. <laughs> sort of Peter Parker's cue, yeah, in a way. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that. It's just this unassuming shed in the back garden and then it's like, yeah, a basement full of spider stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I look, um, it's weird because uh, every sort of subsequent version of Aunt May, they try and add something extra to the character. You know, the with well, the Sally Field version didn't give you much else that, that you wouldn't expect from her. But then you've got the Marissa Tomei version, who's like super young mm-hmm. by com- by comparison. And then yeah. you've got this version, who's like she knows Peter's secret, she handles Peter's secret, she helps mm-hmm. him, uh, she helps Miles get on his way. You can assume that. Miles doesn't need to learn how to manufacture web fluid because he can just go for refills uh, to to May's house and get and get some refills, get his costume fixed up, you know that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, because I, I wasn't sure what to expect from the Aunt May character when they introduced her. I expect her to be sort of consumed by grief or whatever else, but no, she kind of just got on with it um, and, and did what she could to help. What about the other spiders? Uh, I would say they're not featured as heavily although I think that's a good thing because they were maybe a bit thinner in characterization than the others you know they, but I loved um, I loved Nicolas Cage's Spider-Man Noir I thought that was inspired casting it was it was brilliant and he just loved it you know he just clearly loved it and uh, I love the you know the whole um, the, this it wasn't quite dumbing down but it was like making it more Kid friendly, I guess, as part of his origin story, where he talks about uh, how he drinks egg something and fights Nazis. Eggnog. Uh, I don't think it was eggnog. I forget what it was, but it was like it was some kind of milkshake thing, anyway. So he drinks milkshakes and and, and fights Nazis, um, and he has that kind of weird thirties insult when he's fighting someone towards the end as well. I forget what the insult was, but it was it was really funny. And he was flummoxed by a Rubik's Cube, which I thought <laughs> was a great detail. Just like, I'm, I'm taking this with me. I don't understand it yet, but I will. <laughs> yeah, and uh, who'd have thought you got to see Nicolas Cage play Superman and Spider-Man in the same year? And also, like, he was just, like, really... Um, like, I don't know, I didn't recognise his voice at all. Like, in terms of voice acting, good job. Yeah, I thought he was recognisably Nick Cage. 
Um, although I had that weird uh, that moment because I didn't know he was in it um, at all, and it was like I heard his voice and I was like, "That sounds like Nick Cage." And then a minute later, it's like, "It is Nick Cage." <laughs> I just like Nick Cage. I'm a huge fan. Doesn't matter what crap he's in, I'll watch it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, um, and he, as I said, he voiced Superman earlier in the year in Teen Titans Go to the Movies. So, go Nick Cage. You've got to be everyone in one year, pretty much. Woo! Yeah, just get his Ghost Rider back and then we're fine. No, I don't think anybody wants that. Uh, and then you had Spider-Ham, which I always love it when they, they bring Spider-Ham into a, you know, a crossover with other characters that aren't pegs. <laughs> and also like all of the jokes like were great <laughs> take this mallet it'll fit in your pocket <laughs> and we said that's all folks and it's like, can you say that, can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah it was very much like a throwback to like older cartoon styles and franchises that yeah. older viewers would be familiar with. It, he he definitely wasn't a character for the kids. No. Uh, he was a character for, for us and for people even older than us. Yeah. Um, and I really respected that. You know, you know, like all the old school Looney Tunes jokes, but then also like the ham jokes, you know, <laughs> whenever the, uh, they said they were, what, what was it? Did they say like slaughter him like a pig or something? Yeah. Yeah, and he was like, I'm right here. <laughs> so good. Oh, no, John Mulaney is great. I love him. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was when Kingpin said, um, it was Kingpin was talking about how, how close he was to Peter Parker, and then uh, I think Gwen says, what a pig, and he's like, I'm right here. Uh, and I think it was a smart choice not to overload the film with him. You know, he was kind of there, um, and, and he proves to be not useless in the final fight and stuff. But Ultimately, he's there for a quick joke and then he's pushed off to the side again. And that's the right way to do it, because otherwise it would be like, this is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, he definitely cool. provided like uh, a, a very specific kind of comedy. Yeah. Um, but it to, in the right levels for it to just be like a bit of a breath of fresh air when scenes got too tense. Um, it, it was definitely there like as a breaker and it, it worked really well. Yeah. And for anime fans, you have Penny who's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of anime stuff, so I don't really know. But, <gasps> no, um... she was so kawaii. I couldn't deal. <laughs> she was so cute. I mean, she, she, fit, <laughs> she fit my, uh, my perception of what anime was like, so you know, uh, which was fine. And I liked the needlessly complicated backstory. It's like I have a psychic link with a spider that lives in my dad's robot. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that's a lot of information to get in five seconds. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, but thing is, but 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 but, but, but uh, for for, for an, an anime character, I mean, uh, uh, that 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 kind of setup is is actually. Pretty normal, actually. Oh, I, mean, I imagine it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, because there are, there are many characters like who who have like far like far more elaborate and, and far 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 weirder origins than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you couldn't have it be too weird because it would take up too much time. I think it was just weird enough for you know for that the purposes of that. It's like this is this is quite insane and uh, people should be. Slightly confused by her presence, and I think it worked. Uh, and of course, we had another spider who didn't appear that much, but he was in the post-credit scene. Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man twenty ninety-nine, which, for a brief cameo post-credit sting joke, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> he was also uh, wasn't he credited as like interesting person number four? Yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, I thought it was great just going back in time to that episode of the 60s show with Mysterio and replacing him with Myst- replacing Mysterio with him and then they have a a pointing match <laughs> and I'd like to see more of Oscar Isaac's 2099 as well I like 2099 version of Spider-Man he's quite cool uh, Miguel O'Hara he's just some guy in the future that has spider powers uh, and a high tech suit and he fights versions of Spider-Man villains in the year 2099. Because why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. 
he's one of the better alternate Spider-Mans. Uh, and I think at the moment in the comics he's back in the present day doing stuff. Maybe he's back now, I don't know. But uh, I did read some stuff where he was back in the, the present day. Who would you want to see to do another one? Is there any other... Like, if they did to do another one and they added more universes in, who would... Is there any, like, Spider-Man you reckon would, like, be fun to fit in with this, like, ragtag gang? Uh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of what other alternate versions I, I know of. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. Let's, let's go with no. Uh, the thing is, these are the... Those ones are sort of the main alternate versions you could think of. They've introduced a bunch of, of alternate ones in, um, in the Spider-Verse comics uh, that I haven't read all of. Um... I don't know, maybe a version of Ben Riley or something. Yeah, I was just going to suggest that, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe the Doctor Octopus version. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah other than that, I don't know. There, I'm sure there's other stuff like Feudal Japan Spider Man and all this kind of stuff. I bet you you've got. Uh, I'm sure there's one that's in Arthurian times and all this kind of stuff. Uh, the Cowboy one, there's a Cowboy one. I don't really want to see that, but uh, no, I think I think these were fine for me. Uh, Wait, does he use his spider stuff as a lasso? I don't know. I want to see the cowboy one now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to read the cowboy one. That sounds like the best one. <laughs> I don't know if it ever existed in a comic. I know it was in a panel of a, a comic somewhere, but I don't know if uh, they ever actually made it into anything. Uh, I would like to see more of Spider-Man twenty ninety nine. Especially if Oscar Isaac's voicing him. Because that looks like it'd be a fun character. So, I don't know much about Spider-Man 2099. What, what, what's special about him? Well, it's kind of the point is he's not that special. Uh, he works for Alchemax, which is, um, obviously I've mentioned in this film, but in the future it's like, it's this kind of corrupt global conglomerate that a lot of people have to work for and most of your stuff comes from them. It's basically what Disney is going to be to us in about 10 years. <laughs> so, um, mm. yeah, we're all going to work for Disney someday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, he works at Alchemax and I think he comes across some research. It's like some genetic modification research and he gets spider powers. I'm sure it's by accident. I haven't read the first comic in a while. And then he just puts on a high tech suit and fights crime. But in the future, <laughs> uh, but he's quite an interesting character. Uh, in in that he's just because he is very much this anti-establishment sort of figure. So you know, he, even though he works for Alchemax, he has to like keep his you know exploits as Spider Man a secret from them, and he fights like high tech future versions of all the major villains. So there's like a there's a twenty ninety nine version of. Um, the Hobgoblin, that's pretty cool. All that stuff. Um, so I'd like to see more of that, maybe. I don't know if the, there could be a film set in that future, or where Miles finds himself in that future, or whatever. Uh, could be fun. Yeah, well, I would certainly watch that. Yeah. Again, especially if Oscar Isaac's in it. 100%. Sign me up. Yeah, why not? Um, in terms of the, the main themes... Um, well the, the main theme it tells you at the end you know that anyone can wear the mask and I quite like that idea because it gets into the fundamentals of what Spider-Man was initially because that, that's the idea that Peter Parker was just in the either right or wrong place at the right or wrong time depending on how you view his life uh, but he just gets bitten by the spider he learns a lesson and then he just goes about it in his own way um, and you get to the nonsense in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 where it could only be him that has the powers and all this nonsense. That's rubbish. You know, that's that's not... That that brings in this destiny plot, which is a load of crap. Um, and Miles is very much just bitten in the sewer uh, or in a subway station or whatever it is. You know, there's there's nothing... He's not looking for it. It's not coming to him specifically. Well, it does seem like that spider's from a different universe because it's like fizzling out as it's as it's going for him, but they don't explain anything. So, uh, in that respect, so I liked, I did like that um, that message 
yeah, anybody can be a hero. It's down to the choices that you make. It's down to what you do with what you've got. And, you know, it's a, it's a really strong message in the, the whole leap of faith concept. It's like, yeah, none of us were ready for this. But we all rose to the occasion in our own ways. Absolutely. It's like, like a uh, fairly common kind of theme like with heroics. Yeah, yeah, because it's it, it, it's it's not it's not actually it's not about about, about like having about like have, having 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 powers or or like or or abilities. It's it's, it's more like it's more like about 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 uh, about, uh, about who you are and the choices that you make. Yeah. yeah, and what you decide to do when you when you when you find yourself in like in in those kinds of situations. Yeah, and it is a trial by fire for Miles because he gets these powers, the universe is collapsing in on itself quite literally. Um, he has to deal with the sort of guilt associated with the he didn't take any action when Peter Parker was being killed. Uh, and then his uncle dies in front of him um, and he has to figure out what to do with all that. Uh, it's Yeah, I, lo- I love those kind of hero's journeys uh, where people are just they become the best version of themselves because of of what they're kind of thrust into. I agree with you. I think it's very much like what appeals about superheroes, Um, especially in the sort of comic book Marvel sort of context that, you know, like the the crime-fighting kind. Um, Because there's there's a lot of narratives of, like, super-powered people, and it doesn't always turn out to be about that but the idea that you know of the friendly neighborhood spider-man the the kid who like takes care of the city um who makes sure that the community is okay um and that sort of vibe um is particularly resonant and it always has been particularly resonant because we are social creatures um and no matter how large cities we congregate in there is always a sense of like belonging, belonging in this place, belonging in this neighborhood and with the people around us. Um, And the idea that like one of us could rise to the occasion and, you know, protect everyone else and that that could be anyone and it could be us. That's the most powerful thing. It's, it's, it's Stan Lee at his absolute top best, you know, writing. Um, and yeah, this film absolutely captures that 100% um, in so many different wonderful flavors with all of these different spider people. Um, and it's it's great. It's fantastic. It's what makes this film so enjoyable for everyone. Because um, genuinely, I don't think that I've seen negative reviews of this. Uh, but certainly no one I know in real life um has hated this film because it's just a gem it's just wonderful it's just sweet and relatable and a good time yeah definitely mm. and, and and like i said they were very deliberate in all the spider characters they weren't ready for the life that they now have you know they all they all had to just make choices with with the power they were given and the, and the choice mm. they made was to protect others and yeah. So you don't have any of them who's I volunteered for a super secret experiment where I was given these powers and now I'm just protecting people because that's my job. Um you know that's I mean that's Captain America basically but um and and you know that's a valid origin story in its own right but I, I was always more drawn to the accidental superhero thing mm. uh, personally. You know I, I mean you can take a, take or leave some of the other stuff. Like Superman was born into it, and Batman trained for it, and you know, um, I guess Iron Man is pretty accidental because he didn't care, and then suddenly he did. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. So yeah, that's I think that's why I consistently love Spider Man is because because of that because he does struggle with you know does does have to be me that does this and then something bad happens and he's like fine I'll do it. I did want to go and see my friend uh, do this thing, but I guess I'll have to let them down again because I have to go save the city again because no one else will do it. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's it. I mean, some of my favourite comics are, are where he's trying to get to something really, what you might consider mundane. You know, he wants to go see Mary Jane act on stage. Um, he's He's late for work. 
He has yeah. a test to get to. You know, stuff like that. It's yeah, just these yeah, little yeah. slices mm-hmm. of life and um and it's all the fact that, yeah, the the Spider Man side of his life impacts the real side of his life. And uh so you I mean obviously the, the film ends on an optimistic note with um Miles saying, I'm Spider Man, I'm the you know, the community defender, it's me now but you would think in a sequel it would be the reality of it would start to sink in, his relationship with his parents would be impacted by it his schoolwork might be impacted by it his you know friendships might be impacted by it stuff like mm-hmm. that yeah so yeah um because sequels got to get harder don't they yeah uh, yeah, yeah as they say in last action here <laughs> so the sequels they have to get harder <laughs> uh so that and, and i was very impressed with that and, and the way that that theme perpetuated throughout i wasn't hugely impressed with the villains um, that's probably my main criticism. I think if they focused on Octavius, that'd have been enough. I think Kingpin was maybe a little bit too much, and a little, um, a little unrelated. Uh, while we do obviously know Kingpin from uh, the Netflix Daredevil, and he's fantastic in that, uh, and we know him also from the older Daredevil film. You know, he is he is a familiar sort of figure, sure. But I don't know that he's a Spider-Man villain. Not that we associate him. We don't associate Kingpin with Spider-Man because um, he's not in the in the older movies. It's not necessarily something that we would go, oh yeah, Kingpin, sure. Um, so that's like something that I. I thought, you know, that he kind of came out of the blue there for me. Um, I loved Octavius. Uh, I thought it was great that Octavius was a woman this time. That was really interesting. Um, and I love Catherine Hahn, and, like, she she was amazing. Um, but, yeah, Kingpin, like, where did that come from? Well, it's interesting that you say that, and, and it kind of shows the difference in how we all came to know the character because Mm. the 90s cartoon the kingpin was the main villain throughout okay he was the guy that would hire all the villains Mm. Uh, you know he was the reason that everyone got together and uh, in the comics he was quite a prominent spider-man villain as well right he he would sort of share him with daredevil because they had a lot of crossover in the areas that they would cover Mm -hmm. um but you know he was a he was a spider-man villain and continues to be and in the recent ps4 spider-man game he's the first Ah. boss Interesting, well. okay. So 2018 is the year that Kingpin got owned on three separate <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, poor guy, can't catch a break. Um, just keeps, yeah, Spider-Man defeats him twice and uh, Daredevil defeats him as well. So that's uh, that's brilliant. And then, um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting, but I don't think he fit in this film necessarily. Um, I think, as I said, Octavius would have been fine. Uh, and I would have liked to see more of her as well. Although I did like the reveal. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was one of my favourite yeah. scenes. And the fact yeah. you see her earlier, and Miles's head is covering up her surname. Mm. So it's like Doctor Olivia, and then you know, obviously yeah. the, the answer's on the screen, but we don't see it. Oh, like, like, like the moment when, when, when like, uh, and, uh, 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 up until up until the point of, of, of reveal, like she was, like she, she like. This was just seemed like as like a kind of, a kind of like like a neutral to sort of benevolent kind of kind of, kind of, kind of character, just like sort of scar- scarbrain scientist. Yeah. Um. I think it's but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but then, but then, uh, but then, then at the, at the moment when, like, okay, but which is which is like uh, when 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 she uh, when she when she, went, uh, when she mentions like uh, like a completely, completely destroying Spider Man. Yeah, and yeah, and, and then and Peter says like, "What's your name again?" <laughs> but at that point it clicks that you actually don't know what her name is yeah, yeah exactly and that's when it clicked for me and I was like ah yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great <laughs> like, 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 and, I, and, um, and then you see like the mechanical arms like, like extend from her back and you're like, and you're like that is brilliant mm. yeah the sort of washing machine tubing arms <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it was, it was very good. Uh, it's like, your friends don't call you Doc Ock, do they? It's like, my friends call me Liv. But, <laughs> what a line. Yeah. Yeah. And then later, on, the, later on, Aunt May says, oh, great, it's Liv. So do you think they were friends or something? <laughs> There's a history there that they don't yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, she'd have been enough. But I, I love the sort of, okay, here's the plan, and they do it very kind of, you know, Ocean's Eleven style with first I'll do this, and and they sort of visualise it, and it's like actually it's that lady with the with the glasses that's the um, the head scientist, and he's like, and I'll recheck my personal bias, 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it was a great villain reveal, and then Kingpin was he was just kind of boring. Um, although you, ha- I liked um, Tombstone and Scorpion as the henchmen, and that sort of translated in Spanish from Spanish. Whenever the Scorpion oh yeah yeah of course yeah mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, was that it for villains? Yeah, it was. There wasn't any other. Oh, there was a Green Goblin early on. On oh, Prowler. Yeah. The Prowler, of course. Yeah. And Prowler was just pure terrifying. He was. Yeah. Uh, a far cry from the Donald Glover version, who got his uh, <laughs> hand stuck to a car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was complaining, complaining that his ice cream was going to melt. Yeah. Although I didn't understand, you know, this the scene where he takes his mask off while he's on the phone to Fisk. Like, I don't get why he took his mask off in that moment. He didn't need to. Other than to show the audience that, well, we know who he is. <laughs> and to show Miles that he knows who he is. It's one of those weird, why is he unmasking here? It's a small moment. I'm not yeah. that bothered by it, but it was just, it was weird to me. Uh, yeah, the Prowler was cool. And the bit where he was shot in the back was genuinely shocking yeah yeah I did not expect that at all mm. Mm. yeah um, we sort of touched on it earlier the The animation style was great I think um, I like how the, the different Spider-Men were, or spiders were in different styles completely yeah. different styles that you know they looked weird but they also blended well together mm-hmm. the detail is incredible as well you know when they do close ups of the Spider-Man costume and stuff the you know you see the the indentations and the little pattern that only appears when it sort of catches light the right way um, and the comic book style as you mentioned Kat the you know the, the way they chucked in panels you had the thought boxes and it's like why are my thoughts so loud and yeah. and it's stuff like that I think um, yeah it's I mean, that's not something you could easily do in live action. I think it would look weird. And if, you know, you need any evidence of that, watch Ang Lee's Hulk, uh, where they tried to replicate the comic book style and just... It was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah that just didn't, didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't picture them doing that in live action. I think it is, you've got that distance because it is animated, and it? Like, mm-hmm. So it lets you play around with these things a bit Exactly. More. Like, yeah. the absolute freedom of animation. Like, it's just great that... Like the, we were getting that sort of comic book movie, where like the the absolute freedom of animation allows them to do absolutely anything. There's yeah. no like limitation to um, you know f- physically what people can do, um, or you know obviously CGI and the capability of it looking good or perhaps out of place sometimes you know like in this case you can just do anything you want yeah. and that that that's part of like why this movie was so much fun yeah and i liked the um the line from ham where he said you got a problem with cartoons as if it's mm-hmm. you know because a lot of people dismiss animation as a viable storytelling medium uh but to my mind most of the su- best superhero stories i've seen ever are the animated versions <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and like, and and I look, and uh, I look at I look at like the the, the DC uh, uh, animated movies. I mean, because like, because like they 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 are so much better, like like than than, than the live action ones that they're that they're, that they're trying and largely failing to make. Yeah. Well, they're not as visually creative as this, but yeah, they are. No. They are a lot better. And my favorite version of Spider Man outside of the comics is Spectacular Spider Man, which is a sadly short lived cartoon. Yeah, but it, yeah. it was. Magnificent. Yes. Um, so maybe him. Let's let's see that version again. Bring him back. Why not? I mean, rights violation would probably make that a problem. But uh, yeah. Um, but as I said, the thought bubbles were were just really funny. It was just mm. the you know you could you could see what Miles was thinking and uh, and the fact that there was almost a fourth wall break in the way that they approached it as well. You know, the um, the bit where he's trying to raise his hand to do the shoulder touch. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, is it, am I really doing this this slowly or does it just feel that way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the final battle, I mean, it's, you know, it's bananas. <laughs> just, you know, with everything that's flying around. Yeah, visually, uh, there's yeah. just so much happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, I have no idea, but uh, it didn't confuse me. It was still very much focused on. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, but but it was very busy visually, for sure. Yeah, 
Um, but yeah, it looks great. And the sort of pseudo stop motion style to the, the Miles Morales side of it was was quite cool. Um, I'm guessing that Lord and Miller kind of brought that from the Lego movie a bit. That's the kind of way that they want to make films. I mean, they didn't direct this or anything, but they had a hand in, in, in getting it made, I guess. So, yeah, it just it, I guess that's their distinct thing that they bring to stuff. And it, and it really works. The, the animation of the movement was great as well. You know, the, the swinging around, it was just much more kinetic than you would ever get in the um, live-action versions. And it really shows, um, like, I, uh, just... Uh, ju- uh, just, just like the the kinds of visual spectacle like that, that you're able able to achieve with that with animation. Yeah, uh, Isaac, you're an artist. What did you think of all the, the art styles? It play? was very beautiful. It was a very <laughs> beautiful movie, especially that there was a bit where like I think it's in the trailers as well, where like he's running away from a a car crash and it seems to go into like a sort of pencil-y outline. Yeah, bit there's like loads of little bits like that, or when he jumps. He takes his leap of faith and like he's the right way up in the city. He's like descending into, like yeah. from, from above. There's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of very beautiful moments that. Yeah, like it wouldn't work in a live action Spider Man movie. It just wouldn't be as impressive. Like it needs that wholly unique, and, like wonderful world that like this Spider Verse is doing. Yeah, especially with the stuff like the glitches and the like. The moments of madness and that the spiders glitching out and stuff. Yeah, uh, and some of the the little visualizations I liked uh, the uh, the sort of visualization of Miles's invisibility was really cool. Was, you know when you could see him and the, the the sort of ghostly outline. I thought that was really cool. Little things like that. The I really liked his store bought Spider Man costume. They they spent a lot of time making that look like rubbish. You know the. It just looks like something you would buy for a kid, and and the fact that he wears it for most of the film was just, was just great. Uh, but he bring he sort of wears it with a hoodie and stuff, so it, it works. So does anyone have any final things to say about this film? Uh, how are they feeling about the future of Spider Man, whether it be in live action or animated? What do you kind of want to see from this next? Try and put it out your head what Sony have announced, because I think they're just they're doing what they usually do. We've got a good thing. Let's ruin it. Uh, that, that's the Sony way. So, Andrew, what would you like to see kind of next? Uh, maybe live action, animated. You know, how would you like to see Sony play around with their toys? Well, I would. I would. I would quite like to see, see like uh, see uh, see uh, Sp- uh, Spider Man movie uh, uh, maybe taking place in in one of the other one of the one of the other dimensions. Not necessarily like uh, bring bring in all the other spy people um, again because. Because I think if 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 I think if that were overdone, it might end up being a, a little repetitive. Mm, I absolutely agree. Wouldn't it be great? Like I loved Gwen's like kind of watercolor world. Would it be amazing to have a movie in that setting? Like just yeah. her story. And it looks like we're getting that. So. Ah, so excited. And also and also like spider like noir would be amazing. Like just like a black and white nineteen thirties like yeah, I would love that. Yeah. And like, everyone's everyone's just everyone's, everyone's like just just so just so grim and and, mm-hmm. like, and, and, and serious. Like like and and, and, and communicates by intense inter- internal monologues. Yeah, although it would mm. be like hyper serious, so it'd be kinda of funny. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like look how bleak this world is, haha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that'd be fun. Yeah, um, I wonder if we'll ever see a live-action Miles Morales. So I can't imagine a better version than this. You know, I, hmm. I feel like it'll always be compared, and I think that maybe Kevin Feige will look at this and be like, "Ah, oh, now we can't introduce him for a long time. <laughs> crap." You know, like, uh, we've already teased him. We had no idea they were doing going to make a good thing. Oh no, yeah. Um, because you know Sony's output is not always the best, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'd like to see next. Uh, the Spider Women thing, I suppose. I, I mean, I don't know if that will put. That, oh yeah, I'm here for that. Because uh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they were going to do Jessica Drew and Silk. Uh, yeah. Silk is a character who should be interesting to see done in some way. Because uh, she's never been adapted outside of the comics, as far as I'm aware. Unless she's turned up in some cartoon I've never watched. 
So yeah, that'll think that'll so. Be fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but it's a good time to be a Spider-Man fan. Got the got the game, which is so good. I've been playing it since I got it in September. Can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> because it. Uh, it gets. I, I, it really makes me wish I had a Spider um, PS4 because I can't play it and I'm very upset. Yeah, you could just watch it on YouTube. I could do. That's true. Yeah. I could live stream it. But I pause it a lot and go away and do stuff. So that's cool. <laughs> Maybe not you then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm quite good at it. I've beaten it on every difficulty level. <laughs> uh, unlocked everything. Got my first platinum trophy. So yay me. Uh, so we had that. We've got Spider-Verse. We've got hopefully a good Spider-Man film coming out this year. Hmm. Uh, we shall see. We shall see how that turns up. Where he's going to wear a version of the noir suit. Hmm. Uh, the stealth suit, which, you know, which yeah, really has I'm, I'm, fingerless I'm, I'm, gloves, so it's not very stealthy, leaving your fingerprints everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah well, and uh, I'm tentatively hopeful that it, it might be good. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I want to see more of this, this style of animation movies. Maybe like, not necessarily in the Spider-Man, but just more crazy, like... Cool looking animated films that like throw different styles against each other. I don't know if like whoever the the, the team that did this film like to go on to make another like their own film or like another property. Yeah. And not to like be exactly the same sort of as this, but like just if like it's just so crazy to watch. This is more like mind boggling just to watch it. Even from the intro where it's just like the like the logo was like flashing around and going crazy and like glitching out and like I knew I was like oh, this is going to be like it's going to be fun like even if it's a bad film yeah and I was thinking like even if this is a bad film going in like before I watched it it's going to look beautiful so at least I'll have <laughs> like even if it's a mess like it'll look great like I'll have like some really stunning shots in it so I think I want to see more of what these guys can do just drawing wise in like different well, different settings or different times or different stories or whatever. Yeah, and I would just love to see just stuff that's as smartly written as this as well. Just more of that because, I mean, other than the minor flaws that we've all called out that we didn't really notice uh, until you sort of dissect it after the fact, uh, it's it's never dull. Everything you know, everything that's put in front of you works uh, more or less. You know the the timing of the jokes is perfect. It's just such a funny film, but it just it's but it never, never descends into the the farcical levels that mean that you can't take it seriously. I mean they managed to put a Looney Tunes style animated pig in there <laughs> and not have it derail the film. I mean that's that <laughs> takes some talent, you know. And um, I think you know the first joke that they made was just uh, it set me up nicely. The by the Comics Code Authority. Uh, you know the stamp that appears on the screen uh, right after the um, well right after the titles basically you know it's like the first thing you see after the logos uh, the here's who made the film logos and it's yeah it, it was just I don't know I, I think uh, if if you understand the background of the comics code authority and, and how people how comic book writers had to change their stories to get around it uh, and often ridiculous ways um, it's just you know it's, it's a good little gag and it just never stops from there it's just always funny uh, but always endearing and it's, getting that balance must have been extremely difficult I don't know we, uh, Andrew we were in the same screening and I think the um, it was a bunch of like minded Individuals there because I think the the comics code thing got a good chuckle from a bunch of people. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah though I had actually forgotten about that until until you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, just I don't know. It's such a small and insignificant thing, but I just loved it. Uh, I don't know why. I it just it's the first thing you see, I suppose, and it's just yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think I think 
I think I think to, to just 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 from from like from from be, from being put there as, as, a, as a as a joke, yeah. Then uh, making a statement like that the that the people who made the film are on the same wavelength as people who are watching it. Yeah, this is made by people that love Spider Man. Exactly, uh, and people uh, who and people who understand it, people, yeah. people who people who understand what's good about it, and and what audiences are going to enjoy watching. And people love people that love comics as well, which is also important. Uh, but still accessible. What a masterpiece, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Good job, Sony. Don't ruin it. Please. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Try harder. Keep going. Keep doing it. So on that note, I think we should uh, wrap up. Uh, Andrew, have you got any last things to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, all, all, uh, just uh, just to say just to say that if if uh, anyone anyone hasn't seen the movie, um, though I don't know why they've been listening to this if they haven't, uh, but yeah, but, yeah, but, but uh, just just uh, seek it out as soon, soon as you can because it is wonderful and uh, it's, and you will enjoy it. Yeah, Kat, any final thoughts? I'm just really glad this movie exists. It's everything that I was hoping it was going to be. And I really hope that it sparks a new wave in filmmaking, uh, a new wave of like animated films that, that speak to both audiences. Cause this was definitely a more grown up kind of animated film. Sure. It has elements that can appeal to children, but it's, it's definitely sort of skewed a little darker and I love that, and I want more of it. More of this, please. Yeah. Fully agree. Uh, Isaac, any final things? Uh, yeah, it's a good one, eh? I don't know if I standard. <laughs> I think, well, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's good, good laugh. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's fine. Killed a couple of hours. Killed a couple of hours. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, that's how you sum it up, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love this film. Uh, I don't know if it's my favourite Spider-Man film yet. I don't think I've had enough time with it to let it kind of marinate, uh, so to speak. So I think it'll be def- it's certainly up there. I still love Spider-Man 2, so I haven't decided whether it's better than Spider-Man 2 quite yet. But maybe it is. I don't know. Check with me in a few months once I've got it on Blu-ray and have watched it 17 times. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. So, uh, Andrew, thank you for being here with your brand new microphone. Yes, yes, well, yes, well, thank you for having me. I, I shall, uh, I, I shall now return to to my monochrome universe and, <laughs> ni- and ni- nihilistically contemplate the this, the emptiness of my existence. Have a milkshake. Just burn some matches. <laughs> burn some, burn, burn burn some, some Nazis. <laughs> Punch some Nazis. Um, what fun you will have. Try and solve that Rubik's Cube, which is hard enough when you can see the colours. Cat, <laughs> uh, thanks for being here and indulging our, the Spider-Man love that was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I, I've certainly gotten some pointers of things to check out. Comic book storylines to read, maybe. The, definitely the 90s animated series, and I'm going to need those episode titles, uh, the, the ones that you mentioned earlier. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, like, I don't... I obviously come from a more sort of movie-centric background um, for all of my sort of marvel type things. You know, I, I did read a bunch of X-Men and a bunch of Daredevil, but not the other stuff. And so, you know, finding out about all of it is fun. I love it. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for, you know, shedding some light on stuff I didn't know. Yeah, well, uh, contrary to what some people on the internet would have you believe, uh, you get to s- decide when you become a fan of something. Other people don't get to decide just because you haven't read Oh, firm- firmly. I firmly believe this. Yeah, I firmly agree with that. I definitely came into the world of comic books and the world of superheroes and all of that sort of nerdy stuff. I came into it through the world of film. And I firmly believe in that you shouldn't have to 
have all that background knowledge to appreciate and to become a fan and you can enter the fandom through a bunch of different ways. One of my favorite authors, Victoria Schwab says, um, there's a bunch of, um, doors, different doors into, uh, the genre of science fiction and fantasy. And for different people, it's a different door. And, yeah, so so I don't feel bad about not knowing these things. It's just a dearth of of stories waiting for me to discover them. And so, yeah. Yeah, and you get that. I, th- I think the, the movies are a, a huge window into these worlds for a lot of people mm-hmm. because, you know, they are mainstream films. And I think, yeah, mo- comics have a very particular especially sort of mainstream comics like Marvel and DC, they've got a very particular thing about them is that they're not for everybody. And you might pick up something and read the 20 odd pages and be like, that was garbage. And mm. that's, you know, that I think that's certainly when I was reading them recently, that were fairly recently, that was the majority of them for me were just like, why did I spend money on that? That wasn't good. Um, but the, I think the general consensus is, you know, from people who aren't, scumbags will tell people if you've seen Spider-Man in a film (laughs) go up and pick the most recent go and pick up the most recent issue of his comic read it and see what (laughs) you think you know you can use Wikipedia to fill in any gaps that you have uh, because it's all out there you don't really need to have read from the start and uh, I think they're getting a bit better at sort of advertising when a jumping on point is going to happen so they'll close off an arc and they'll be like now's a good time to start because we're starting something new as long as you know who the character is on you go Although, you know, I feel sorry for the people that might have watched Josh Trank's Fantastic Four and then picked up a Fantastic Four comic. Like, <laughs> I don't know I don't know that there's that many people who did. <laughs> no, 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 nobody. Yeah, I don't think that's a, that's a comic. Unless it was while they're watching the film, it's like, oh, Jesus, I need to dip yeah. out for a minute, find something more entertaining to do for the next two hours. Yeah, well, could you imagine, uh, imagine someone coming out of that film being like, that was the best thing I've ever seen. I can't wait to immerse myself in the world of these characters. The comics have got to be great. And then they pick up you know, the first collection, the first trade paperback back of Fantastic Four, and they're like, what the hell is this? They're all colourful. They're, t- <laughs> <laughs> they're in space. Why aren't they in a warehouse somewhere? <laughs> yeah, that, I would love that. Someone, There's got to be someone out there that did that. You know, the, the law of averages suggests that that happened. Well, not the law of averages, but something. You know, the that happened to someone. <laughs> so yeah, Kat, you're. I, know, I hope so because it's a it's a hilarious thought. Yeah, uh, your window into the uh, into the Spider Verse, so to speak, is uh, <laughs> completely valid because quite. A, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, because I, that's how liking things works. Exactly. Yeah, and no one has any right to tell someone that they don't really like something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th- there's been I feel I feel like the um, sort of that sort of fandom gatekeeping. It's it's not been that bad in recent years. As, as it's it's not been as bad as it used to be. Um, exactly because there's a lot of us who are entering fandoms and sort of changing the conversations and you know. Pop, the pop culture is accepting those niche areas of interest that once used to be just that, like super niche. And now, look at us, we're getting a, an animated multiverse Spider-Man movie. Like, what a, what a time to be alive, truly. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it depends what fandom you're in. If you're in the Star Trek fandom, there's a lot of people that don't think you're... Maybe, yeah, fandom. maybe not the best Probably. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not the best time to enter the Star Trek fandom, but yeah, yeah that's, a diff- that's a different podcast. <laughs> or maybe it is the best time because you're not relying on stuff that's 20 years old. You know, mm. anymore. Uh, who knows? That's, that's, that, that's a different conversation entirely. Uh, Isaac, have you got anything final to say? Uh... No, really. I mean, like, it was because I like when I would see this, I was just someone who had like, like doesn't watch like comic book movies really, but just wanted to see it because it looked good. I mean, that's like, I know like the last big, like the last big one of the year was like the was it Infinity War? 
And that wouldn't yeah. happen because you can't go, oh, I want to see this Infinity War thing. It's like, you're not going to enjoy it because it's like a series 20 finale. movies no in. <laughs> but it's nice. It's like, here's one that looks good and it is like it's casual. Like if you mm-hmm. don't know anything, it's like, you can just go watch this. Yeah. And I was saying like, cause I, like, I didn't read comics when I was little. I watched, it was Batman Forever, which is the one that got me in. Mm. <laughs> I like Batman Forever, it's great. That is respectable. Um, Stop laughing, Craig. <laughs> uh, I just like that, that being your first ever comic book movie is very funny. Yes, my first ever comic book movie was Batman Forever. It's really good. <laughs> uh, but I was going to mention, it's not like... not as bad as Batman and Robin, I suppose. That would be a weird <laughs> they've, they've sort of cottoned on in, like, well, at least in, like, the Forbidden Planets that I've been in. And, like, if a film comes out, like, say, like, Black Panther will come out and they'll be like oh my the board when you go in it's like these are your starter ones like if you want to read more Black Panther get this one because you don't need to know out about anything else so I think they're sort of cottoned onto that market of people are watching the films and then going to the shop afterwards which seems obvious when you meant, when you say it out loud yeah. but it seems weird that it's taken them like people still think that's like a bad thing it's like oh you have to watch the film first like yeah I have, yeah. to, I have to hear something to know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so that's great. Um, my final thought is I love being a Spider-Man fan right now because there's so much. <laughs> uh, and just a comic book fan in general. Or uh, I don't really read comics anymore, so that would make me a fake fan to some. But uh, I don't, yeah, I just don't have the time. And when I do sit down and read them, I'm not usually that fulfilled by them, so I just don't bother. Uh, but. Nah, it's, it's good times. Let's have more of this. More more good quality stuff. Whether it's Star Spider-Man or anyone else. Here, or, or... here. So that was our discussion on Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Special thanks to YouTubers DSC for the instrumental Spider-Man music and HiCloud for the cover of the Spider-Verse single, Sunflower. If you like what you heard, then hit that subscribe button on iTunes, YouTube, or any major podcasting app. iTunes users, if you could leave us a star rating and a comment, we'd love you forever. If you want to talk about anything said here, or just in general, then hit us up on Facebook or Twitter under Neil Before Blog, or leave a comment on neilbeforeblog.co.uk. As always, we hope you'll join us on the next Neil Before Pod. Excelsior!